Bro, the phone has it wrong. Right? Unless it's work related, which I have to do something different. It's not like uh, my social card is super filled. It's one of the things that they don't tell you when you're in school when you're a kid. Make sure you keep in touch with the friends that you make in school because they're all going to vanish. And then you'll be surrounded by NPCs that you don't know. So that's why when I go to like the grocery store and the checkout person is super nice to me, I'm like, I'm almost in tears at that point because. You know, sometimes that's all you get. Um, so <clears throat> take your thinking caps off, folks, because we are going to start doing some extraordinarily mind numbing content i kind of want to put on like an audiobook i just don't know if i actually can put on an audiobook while we do this so normally what i would do while i do this if i'm not streaming is i like watch a movie or watch somebody else's live stream um i don't know if i could actually watch somebody else's live stream while i live stream I think then it's sort of like looking in a mirror at yourself through a mirror because then it just sort of self-replicates and we might make the universe explode. So, but it is sort of like this content that I'm going to do, I'm going to farm XP in the Maybar event and it's super mind dead. It's like, there's no thought to it. It's just very simple, straightforward. The first few times you do it, it's pretty interesting, but after that, it gets really boring. And this event has been going on for many years, even though it's significantly different now than it was when they first introduced it. Um, it's never been a super complicated event. They did add a new quest this year. We'll go take a look at it. Um, but here's the thing about this new quest. I did not really care for it. I didn't think it was that fun, the shop till you drop. Um, I did something in it wrong. I wasn't even able to earn all the stars. I missed something. And that's super annoying because the first time you do these, if you get all five, you get a big XP hit. And for some reason, I accidentally missed something, which makes no sense because the quest is tiny. Um, but I just wasn't a huge fan of what they tried to do with this particular one. So I would prefer them to put in the old one that they had in that that was really long that you drop down uh, into the the basically one of the shroud quests. I forget the name of it. Um, I think it's coalescence chamber or something like that. But it's it, that one is I like it's long, but it's actually not not a bad quest. I think it's people's least favorite quest because it's the longest. Forget what it's called in this event here, but I was not a fan of this new quest, so I won't be doing that again. But I've done all the others. The only one we haven't done so far is the dragon, and I just need to earn a couple keys, and then we, we'll, we'll do it to get the first time XP. And so for this event, what you want to do, if you're new to this, if you're watching this, uh, stream if you show up and you you are doing these other people have covered this but i'll cover it right now really quickly the first time you do this quest on the server before you have any stars here if you're new you do not want to do any of, first of all you don't want to do any of these until you're in epics so don't do any of these halloween things if you're under level 20 but once you hit level 20 you want to come and you want to do them all once on the maximum difficulty. So that would be level 39 right now. I mean, that might be different when this video goes onto YouTube. And if you look at it in like a couple of years, this level may be even higher than, but for right now, even though you're level 20, you do it at level 39, it's going to be difficult. It'll take you a while, but that'll give you the biggest XP punch. You want to get all the stars 
And then once you do that, you do them all like that for the first go, then what you do is you basically go for your level and then you just add five levels to it. So I'm level 23, so I need to do level 28 for this. There's no reason to do this on level 39 once you've already got all the stars. It's just way too slow. Um, and you don't want to go below your level because you'd start losing XP. Uh, doing it at level is also okay. So I'm 23. I could do this at level 23. But it's not much more difficult and you do get more XP, which makes this generally go faster to do it. it you know, um, five levels higher is the typical recommend because that's just for some reason how they code this game. Things are usually like five levels higher is the is the ceiling beyond that it really doesn't matter so um but that's not necessarily true you can't you could technically do level 39 you would get a little bit more xp but my opinion is not worth the extra effort that it takes you to do that unless you have a party full of bangers that are really really uh you know gonna giga blast and just blow everything away but doing it alone like i am it's just you know um would just take way too long and just be too slow so you see like when i throw my fireball at this level the reason i'm doing it at this level is because most everything is instantly obliterated that's what i want I don't want to stay here and have to fight these things for a while. I just basically want them all to group up on me, throw one fireball, and just incinerate most of them, right? Like, obviously, um, it's sometimes it's difficult to get them all, but, like, that was a good throw right there. And it's basically what we want to do. Just want to want to not think about it. Just want to throw one fireball at, at each group and then just keep moving. And everything, hopefully, that I throw a fireball at is obliterated. But that's not always true. Like, that quell right there in front of me is usually a pain. Um, sometimes the specters will go in and out. They'll, like, you know, disappear. Like, there's a shadow that I missed. Probably because he, like, blinked out or phased out or whatever. The specters do the same thing. They will like phase out and so even if you throw a spell at them you don't always hit them but we don't really care about the individuals we're just trying to get the gate to open above us which we just did and that's a lich so he's going to be immune to anything under level 4 I'm also getting lag I'm getting pretty significant rubber banding. So, I mean, they supposedly recently introduced like a lag fix. Um, but my experience, I haven't been playing a lot because my experience has been like when they did the lag fix, it actually added more lag. So, like, I have not been, um, you know, I cannot report that they did anything to fix the, the rubber banding. It's... From my perspective, it's still pretty bad. Like that right there. Like, I threw the fireball, it hit them all, but nothing happened. And I'm not sure if that's lag, or did they all phase out? I don't know. It's pretty frustrating, though. Like, you know. So the hope of the new server that they're opening Wednesday is that there won't be lag now i gotta be honest i tested the event and i was not at all happy <clears throat> and so um while i'm going to do the event i just basically learned that because the event is on a new vip server unless something changes and i'm going to read about it between now and then the cosmetics that we earn over on that server are not going to be available on the regular servers. I'm, I, th I think somebody was saying in chat. Now, I'm not sure if that's incorrect. Normally, what they do is anything that you earn 
like account wide you can collect it on any server so i have a feeling like that's probably what they're going to do but it would be a bad move if they opened an event and you earned stuff but you could not collect it on your main server right so hopefully they address that concern and fix it it's just a lot of lag like i'm casting abilities and things are not showing up um so that's it right there we got like 20 something thousand xp it took us how long did it take us to do that four minutes and you know once we get into a groove and you start running you can get that down you can you can end up doing it in like two and a half minutes like if you're really cooking and that's what people do they'll just run this farming keys over and over and over and over again and um basically turn their brains off well what i should do is um yeah see that Let's see what happens when i hit them all right there was no lag there although we have to make sure that we get that archer so everything about the archers will follow you. It's, it's super annoying. Um, yeah, I have to look on the um, on the Twitch guidelines and see if I can actually do uh, an audiobook. You know, they have public domain. I'm not talking about doing something that's copywritten. Um, there are like public domain things that exist. The other thing too is, can I just read? like a public domain book on a live stream. You know what I mean? Like, I think I can. I just want to be 100% sure because I don't want to flag my account for some bullshit. Because Twitch, I, I, they ban people for like things that make sense and they also ban people for things that make very little sense. So I don't know. I don't want to do something that gets my account flagged. Because they're very inconsistent with their banning and their their unbanning, and then the, that's the other thing. Like a lot of times, people who do really bad things are only temporarily banned, and people who really didn't do much, um, some of them have been deplatformed completely. Right? I don't know. So, no explanation. But I don't want to get into a spot where if I do like content that's not mine. So, I will do some research before I actually do that. And the reason to do it is because that's what I would normally do. Like, if I were doing this alone. Right? Like, if I were doing this alone, I would throw on, a, I would throw on an audiobook or I would throw on a movie. And I would just, like, zone out. Because this is very, like, you know, brain dead. It's super frustrating, too, to think, like, I can one-shot everything except for one random guy. Who, for some reason, takes nine hits. Like, that mummy. That mummy has three spells in him, and he's still running around. All right, here we go. So the idea is to catch them all before they, like, split up. So I target the group, and then I throw my spell and hope to obliterate them all immediately. But it doesn't always work. I should have got that. Yeah, I got that whole group. That was good. I should get this whole group right here. Nope, this dude was standing too far away. And I like I got a wild magic surge that made it so that I was doing no damage. So I'm like so over wild magic. I really need to get out of it. I can't stand it anymore. I hate it. I don't like the the unpredictability of it. It's just not my It's interesting, like for the first couple lives that you do. But like that dance that I was just doing, that was not the month the <clears throat> Not the lich that cast that on me. That was a wild magic surge. 
So I like debuff myself. It's it's annoying. And I've had mummy rot now for like three weeks. Which is fine. I'm not even really doing this for any rewards. I don't really need any rewards from this. I'm basically doing it for the XP so I can hit level 30 and then we can, um, you know, become something else. That one completely missed. I don't understand it. I'm just spamming delayed blast fireball, basically. Works really well for this. Yeah, see that like that is a debuff from the wild magic that just made my screen go black. It's it's just it's awful. It's like signing up voluntarily for a lobotomy. It's like you got nothing better to do on a Tuesday, go get a lobotomy. Might as well just destroy all your brain cells. Or you can play Wild Magic in TDO. It's the same thing. Yeah, so for the new event I posted, I'm going to do a Dragon Lord. Although, like I was saying, when the new events usually start, I don't usually have time to actually do a lot of questing. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I I'll try. It depends on how busy the event is, how many people show up, uh, if anybody cares. I'm not sure. I haven't heard back from anybody, considering that, um, you know, usually what I do is like the OG hardcore, and um, this event is completely different. It's a completely different event on a completely new server. And, um, I'm, we're not sure, like, who's going to show up, how exciting people are going to be for it. Uh, whether or not it's going to have the same sort of appeal that the, um, you know, the old style event had. My feeling is that people probably will show up and play, but I'm not, not really, like, they've never done anything like this before so this event is sort of unique and when I tested it there are a lot of things wrong with it and they're launching it like live a week later so obviously they didn't tweak it at all so everything that I like criticized about it has not been like balanced or changed it, it seems like um, we're just gonna get the event as I posted it on my YouTube channel when I tested it and then if you're curious, I do talk about in that video the things that I like and I don't like. One of the things that I didn't like very quickly initially was the fact that it just takes forever to do even one of the lanterns. It just, just requires an awful lot of like farming and waiting around. Um, which is one of the, the things that I did not like when I tested it. <clears throat> What I mean specifically is that when you go into a quest, when you have one of these lanterns equipped, basically you equip it to a trinket slot. They may change that, but um, there's no 
like spawn for the mist walker you just have to basically wait and so like i did a quest i think it was like 35 minutes and i sat around for another 10 minutes and did not get one so what i said at the time is that you know if you were hoping to go to that event and just giga blast and get like your cosmetic by you know filling up one lantern even that's probably going to be really slow i mean unless you get super lucky or you just play like like a degenerate like basically you just never log off you're playing all the time for you know the first week then yeah maybe you could probably like blast out and get um you know your a lantern or two filled uh in that time frame but it was just so slow and unpredictable it, the point I said in the video was it's just that it wasn't fun. You know, it's not like I don't mind working for stuff. Obviously, there are lots of long term goals like the um, the TR train is a good example of that. Like if you decide to start doing TR uh, building in DDO and getting the strength from having past lives, that's a long term. That's a long game. That's not something you really can do unless you wail out and like you buy a bunch of autos boxes. You can blast a few really quickly. But um, overall, if you were to just play normally, generally, you know, you can you can acquire um, heroic past lives, racial past lives, epic past lives. Uh, you know, it's a decent, but it's not super fast. And so for this lantern thing, it was sort of the same idea. It just felt really slow. It wasn't something like this Maybar event where I can, you know, let's say I took the weekend off from work and I wanted to earn a horse. It's really easy to do that in this event because I just had to blast through a, a few different versions of this quest. I just CC'd myself. Um, you know, like right now I'm earning keys. After I get the keys, I'll go into do the dragon a few times to get the the scales. I, I think I need 200 scales, which means I'll probably have to do that like 10 times or something like that. But that's manageable, easy. That's quick. I could do it over the course of a weekend and I don't have to sweat. And then I've got a new mount and then I don't have to worry about playing anymore. Well, these so these lantern rewards are cosmetic and... I don't know what they look like. I don't know how cool they are, whether they, they have a lot of FOMO, whether people are going to go nuts over them or whether they're just, eh, I'm not a, I'm a cosmetic guy, but I'm not like a huge cloak guy. Like I don't really like a lot of the cloaks, so I don't really care. And two of the cosmetics are cloaks. They do have a mount. I have no idea what the mount looks like. They have a hardcore mount. I have no idea what that looks like. They have a shield. I could care less. I don't really use cosmetics for shields. Um, I do, but I have one that it makes my shield into like a walking stick. So I would never not use that. So I don't care how cool the shield is. I would never not use my walking stick. I have it in my arm right now. It's hard to see, but um, it's there. And then the other, the other cosmetic, I forget what it was. I, it's two cloaks, a mount a shield and something else there's one other thing right and there's two versions of each there's a hardcore version and the regular version right so you set the pick and you can only farm one lantern at a time the hardcore ones you pick up at level one, if you die, they get destroyed. There's no going back. You'd have to re like reincarnate. Now, I'm not sure if they have checks and balances in if you lesser reincarnated back down to level one and ran over to the lantern person, if it would matter. I, they probably hopefully fixed something like that. I'm sure somebody's going to try it out when it when the event starts. Because um, that would be an exploit. But... Let's see how many keys I have. I have nine keys. I think maybe what I should try to do, because I really only want keys for this. I'll, I'm 23. I'll do this on 25 to see if we can make it go even faster. Because we're really only coming into this one to farm keys. This isn't where we really farm XP. So this we want this quest to be as fast as possible.
and I might my casts don't always like land for some reason. I'm gonna let them all gather up around me and then throw the fireball. And like I said, there's always one dude who for some reason doesn't get hit. I don't know. Yeah, so the next upgrade I'm going to do for my stream is to get a, a better camera. I need a better camera. This camera that I use, I got during the height of COVID. If anybody remembers what was going on, because it's kind of a, a haze, right? Um, but during COVID, because everybody was stuck in the house, there was a mass run on anything computer related that involved live streaming. Because everybody was doing Zoom meetings, if you remember, Zoom became really popular. So, cameras, microphones, lights, like it all just got super hard to get. And it took a long time. I think I ordered this, it's like a Logitech CR20, I think, off the top of my head. That might not be exactly what it is, but it's something like that. Um, I think I ordered it and it took like three months to get to me. So, it does HD, but it's just, I'm not a huge fan of the quality. I want something that has like a, a better depth of field and a more sensitive like um, lens for the light because the light where I am, I do use a couple of lights, but like I don't have really good lights so i need a camera that's like able to give me a good picture with shitty lights really it all comes down to the lights though so i should probably uh get myself some better lights as well just to make sure that you know whatever camera i get but i'm not sure when i'm going to do that and then the next thing would be a microphone this mic i have is good uh the next one would be just a little better Did I miss a group? Oh, come on, man. Or is it this dude? No, it's not that dude. All right. For some reason, some, one of the groups that I went to, I guess I missed one back there. So this run is going to be slow, even though we did it a little lower level. See how fast we did that. Three minutes, 36 seconds. So significantly faster. Right? Like we're only, the only thing we care about is keys. We don't care about the XP. All we care about is farming the keys out of this. So we want it to be as fast as possible. Getting it down to three minutes or less under three minutes is like the goal, but it's tough to do it that fast. You have to kind of get in a groove. You have to sort of take your brain out, put it in a jar of Purell and then just play. The other thing too is, which I just find I hit, which, you know, I thought maybe they would have fixed this Hand like feet, happy Friday, good to see you. Um, I thought they would have fixed this, but I guarantee you that they didn't, and I'm fucked now, stuck at a loading screen. How about this, right? You know, if you guys play any other video games, I play a lot of video games, all different kinds of video games. Uh, the only video games that I really don't play are esports, but I play just about everything else. And um, I gotta tell you, man, like, there's no game I can think of. That, that that does a loading screen crash out like this game does. Like this right here that I'm stuck in. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that it resolved. Usually it doesn't. That's a good sign. Maybe they have some emergency code working in the background that saves it. 
Yeah, so what I was saying, first time you do it, blast it on the highest level you can do. Don't do it before level 20. Come in here at level 20, do it at level 39. Once you're done, you're just farming keys. You do it five levels higher. You can do it two levels higher. You can even do it at level. I could do it at level 23. It would be even faster. We'll do it at level 25 because all we care about is farming the keys. What I discovered by doing this over the years, and I'm not sure if it's still true, but it probably is, is that doing it at your level not only is faster, but you typically get more keys. And I'm not sure why. The other thing we want to make sure that we're running always is a is an elixir or the dark, whatever the hell that's called. Um, that dra draft of midnight. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're running that. And those are e you can buy those on the store for like actual money, but they're really easy to farm in this event with a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of the mats. All you have to do is run each of the get one of, you know, like do one of each of the types, the almond quest, the apple quest, the caramel and the cinnamon. And then I think it's like four or five of each plus a little bit of chocolate. You can get a potion that lasts you for an hour and it just makes a huge difference in your acquisition of chocolate. Like you get a way more, way, way more chocolate, which is good because you use the chocolate uh, for purchasing and also um, you can turn it into like potions and stuff at the end of the event if you have a lot left over Which are really good the the spooky potions of death board. Those are really good to get So All right, we opened it up We're gonna go right over there, and I'm just gonna drop a sunburst on whatever this is All right it's a shadow. Did I get it? I did. We're ignoring the beholders because, you know, that we don't care. They can't really hurt us anyway. None of this stuff can really hurt us. And this archer is always super hard to hit, like, first try. So this, this area right here is, like, you can slow down a lot. It's... I could get into a zone. I just missed all those specters. It's so cheese ball. I missed half the ghouls. Why? Uh, we want five. The number to be five. There it is. Okay. So when we hit this group, we want to be on five. Then we can count down. Four. Three. If we can get all these dudes. No. Of course we missed this one. Two right here. Okay, this group, if we can get everything all at once, we should knock down a one. No, we missed that dude. So there is a dude missing. There he is. Okay, one, and then this is the last group. Okay. I'm going to try to sunburst the lich immediately, knocking it to half health. Yeah, good. Got him. So that's super fast. Do we hit three minutes? No, we're getting closer though. Three minutes and 16 seconds. People who do this a lot and get really good at it, I think they can get down to like two minutes, two and a half minutes. It's pretty crazy. I, of course, don't care. From my perspective, I like when video games entertain me, you know, so I don't really like the brain dead parts. It's one of the issues that I've been having with the latest Diablo 4 expansion. Like, I like it, but there's a lot of brain dead parts where you're just supposed to be like, you know, the thing that Blizzard does different, though, than this game is that they hit you up with a lot of dopamine. They're, they're constantly throwing um, things at you that like trigger your dopamine receptors you know right they're kind of like blizzard is really good at like giving out drugs uh brain drugs because they they just tickle your dopamine by just giving you a lot of stuff really quickly 
So this one, this is what I was talking about. So we, even though we're level 23, we've never done this before. So we want that first time hit of the massive XP. So we are, we've got a potion on, we've got our, our XP boost. We've got our guild buffs right there. So we're gonna blast this to the highest level. And we're gonna go in, it's gonna take a longer than normal to do it because the level is so different than us. We're going to buff up because it's going to be more difficult, right? We give the finger to the wild magic because it sucks. That green pea soup screen is because I poisoned myself with the wild magic. Um, all right, so here we go. And so now we're basically just going to do the quest. Even though this stuff is, like, really high level, we, we can still make, you know, we can still go through it pretty quickly. Our spells don't hit as hard. We don't one-shot groups. We have to do a lot more casts. We'll probably have to use a shrine. Yeah, at this level, the damage is just it's hard to... They have a lot more hit points, so it's hard to, like, one-shot them. Now we have to go do the puzzle. Puzzle's easy. Um, I think that's good. Okay, I missed that one. All right, so you have to do the dragon twice. This is the first time. This first time is pretty easy. So you can see this quest is like not super quick. So back before they made these materials bound to account, I used to farm this and then sell the the dragon scales in order to make astral shards. It used to be a great way to farm, like to build an economy up for your account for the year. So that's the kind of stuff that people do in MMOs, right? Like. You try to figure out a way that you can make an economy that allows you to not only fund your gameplay, but, you know, also in the community of the game, 
allows you to buy the things you want, right? Um, so she's going to be really tough because she's a lot higher level than me. She's a CR44. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if I'll be able to kill her. I hope so. Uh, when she does that thing over her head, she does a big explosion. You have to hide. Anyway, so back to what I was saying. The economy of the video, of the MMOs. Any MMO that you play, there's an economy. And you have to basically get one up and running. It's kind of like real life. Where you have to figure out what you're going to do. In order to generate, you know, an income for your character. And so... For DDO, selling the, the scales off of this dragon here was extremely profitable for years and years until they, for some reason, decided to make it a count bound. Which is completely stupid, but now you can't sell them at all. And, uh, they're bound to your account. So, you know, the other thing, too, was that if you were someone who like wailed out you you just bought a bunch of alster shards because you let's say you've got like nine kids four wives eight houses and you don't want to spend a lot of time playing you could just log in buy a bunch of alster shards and then somebody would have sold you the the scale so you could you could just buy the scales from a vendor like a person selling them and just go get your whatever you wanted your armor your horse whatever now because they're bound to account you have to farm them yourself. So uh, not only did they screw the sellers like me who would make money off the whales, but they also screwed over people who wanted to whale out and now they actually have to play. And I would make an argument that while, you know, people have different opinions about whales and video, ga video games, it's just a fact of life. That's just the way it is. So... You can't do anything about it. You know, you just have to basically like accept the fact that MMOs have that. Most video games have that, right? So who cares? If they, if somebody wants to slog it and buy the stuff, I don't care. If I could sell it to them, I would, but I no longer can. So I think it's a massive L for the game overall. I, I think it's a huge mistake that they did that. I think that they should be, uh, all the materials should be like, free to sell if you want to sell them because you could farm used to be able to farm this event and make enough astral shards to like fund your entire year of re-rolls you know if you're the type of person who did a lot of re-rolling or whatever you know if you if you wanted to spend shards on like um ship upgrades you know for your guild or whatever it is that you're you were trying to do buy expansion content if you're like free to play or something But there's a lot of decisions that they make that I cannot understand at all. Like, some of them are baffling to me. Alright, and so this time around, we have to turn the mirrors on the ceiling. So each lever gets three pumps. And then to make it more exciting, we have these crazy ghosts. And the ghosts won't kill us if we run through it. It just does like a whole bunch of bane damage to us. Uh, that black screen is not the ghost. That was my wild magic giving me the finger. Yeah, I'm so over the wild magic. I can't wait to hit level 30. Uh, but you can see these these things are super annoying because they will interrupt you from throwing these levers. So, Vader, how are you? You can still post. Yeah, yeah. So you can post all of the ingredients with the exception of the dragon scales. And what I'm talking about with, like, the dragon scales. I used to make a lot of Astro Shards selling dragon scales. You can still make Astro Shards buying and selling um, 
stuff around the the regular materials like the cinnamon and stuff like that but it's not it's not as good because like the almond quest is an example people can run that really quick by themselves and farm almonds this quest that i'm in now with the dragon scales a lot of people don't like doing it it takes a long time there's a lot of different aspects to it like you can see now i'm in phase two where i'm pulling all these levers and lighting the ceiling lamps okay we've got the ceiling lamps done like a lot of people just don't like to do this quest so if i could come in here and farm a thousand dragon scales bro i used to be able to sell them like i have a lot of astral shards in my account and a lot of those astral shards came from farming this event for for dragon scales specifically it just would allow you to make a ton because people don't want to do this it's boring and it's long and you've got these things hitting you like out of nowhere it's it's annoying not to mention that, but then, like, the dragon itself can be a pain. And I don't know if you guys remember, but she she can bug out on you. Like, she could get to a point where she's unkillable, and you'd have to leave and reset the quest. And even though people have been reporting that error, it still happens. I mean, I haven't seen it happen this season. Hopefully, we don't. But, like, you come in here and you attack her, sometimes it's impossible to kill her, so... Um, hopefully, we can do it, though. And you'll see, when I kill her, I'm not even going to earn a lot of sh a lot of scales. I think I get, what, like 20 scales or something? It's, it's not a lot. It might even be less than that. I mean, we're going to see. Like, we'll see how much, but... Did she... Did she do oh, there it is. God. Luckily, the range on that explosion is not super far. <laughs> sunburst. I'm just going to spam sunburst. 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 There. There's an arcane. Okay. Get... Get behind here. I technically could probably just stay out and... and and um like tank that explosion but yeah the green screen is my wild magic it's not her as uh, she's a cr44 so that's why it's taking so long to kill her uh freesage thanks for the sub man i appreciate it sorry if i said the name wrong i have uh like functional dyslexia so i tend to see words backwards when i look at them quickly so it's what's a lot of the reason why i'm hesitant to say people's names right away look at that bro i just ran out of spell components oh boy it's not gonna go well uh is she dead no she's not dead Oh, she's doing the explosion thing. So I just took zero damage from that explosion. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I don't know if my character is uber tough, but literally zero damage from that explosion. So I'm not sure if she's coded correctly to even hurt people, but there she is. So you can see um, what I was talking about. Every single one of these quests, there's nine of them. When you do it for the first time, on max level, even though that took us almost 15 minutes to do, gave me, with all of my XP buffs running, the Sovereign 2, the Guild buffs, the thing, almost 300,000 experience. A fantastic way to um, farm Epic XP. If you're working Epic Past Lives, this is how I have, every Halloween, I would probably farm like here's all I have. All, I have every epic, epic past life that you can get. I just farmed them all. These were all farmed during Hall the Halloween event. Um, the last time I needed to farm them was like a year or two ago. I finished, and um, you can farm at least six epic past lives each Maybar event. If you really want to like push it, you can get degenerate about it. You can probably get like eight or nine. 
is it's a super great time if you're like pushing doing the past life train thing especially if you have any autos boxes saved you can get even more like it, it just gets pretty crazy but you can just blast through them um it's also a good time to do iconics too right like if you have it down to where you you reincarnate 15 and then you get yourself from 15 to 20 reasonably quick like in a day uh, you can get back to doing the epics and just blast yourself because the iconic will give you an iconic past life, the heroic past life, and then you, you can blast yourself an epic past life. So you can end up snagging three. So it's good to do that. Um, I'm all set with the I I do have an iconic to do, though. I still haven't done my tabaxi. But I'm just not... I'm not in the mood to do it, so I'm going to wait. I'm, I'm really close to triple completionist, but I'm not really in a rush to finish. But the addition of Chaos Mancer and the Aladrin uh, Chaos Mancer gives me so much extra power that I kind of had to do it. So we picked up Wild Mage and then we picked up we're on our last Aladrin. I have, I have it twice. This will be the third one when I reincarnate. And then I may, I think I'm missing one or two Iconics. But these are so, probably power-wise the lowest. I think Epics are the highest power for your for your build. Like having the Epics, they just give you so much. They give you a passive. They give you a, a an active. And the active that I'm running right now, if you're wondering... I'm pretty sure it's the um, the light and alignment one from Morning Lord. No, actually, you know what? I'm running Deep Gnome. The reason I'm running Deep Gnome is because... Uh, yeah, did he do 10? God, that's... Bro, he farmed. That's a lot. That's really good. Yeah, I don't think I've ever even done 10. That's a lot. That's You're playing a lot to do that but i mean it's good especially if you're using autos boxes or whatever you can get that pretty quick um deep known because i'm doing illusion so my color spray and the other thing i'm doing i also am blasting illusion so as a sorcerer so i have uh what wherever that is yeah greater focus one and two on illusion so I'm just blasting everything with illusion. And then I also did it for my epic feat, I'm pretty sure. Right there. Um, that will allow us, once we hit legendary, to I'll pick up enchantment. So I'll be able to do like color spray and hold monster. But I'm not going to worry about it, really, because as soon as I hit legendary, I'm going to reincarnate. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to play. I need, I want to get out. I'm I'm mentally done with wild magic. Like I'm over it. We've had enough. I've had enough wild surges to last me my entire life. The guild generates a hundred thousand black apples. That's a lot, bro. Um, that is a good event though. Like the, um, you guys are doing the one with the, uh, the minotaurs. That's a really good one to farm for XP. And that will give you a shit ton of black apples. Oh man. So uh, I'm lagging, but not only am I lagging, but I completely forgot to get s spell components. So I'm going to end up losing this key. That I just used. Because I have to go buy spell components. Uh. Oh, I see why. That's what's going on. Alright, actually, you know what? I'm going to try to save the key. I think I can do this with SLAs. Even though I can't do my fire. Yeah, we'll just do light and... Alright, there we go. We'll see how it goes with the mummy. Yeah, max level once and then just run them at level. Yeah, that's cool. 
So I do them all at max level. That's what I was saying earlier. For max XP, when I hit level 20, I don't touch these before epics. Um, so if I'm under level 20, I don't I don't even go do Maybar. But once I hit level 20, then I come out here and I do them all for one time on max level. And then what I'll do probably is farm keys. Um, I'm low level to be doing what I'm doing in here because it's going to take me a while to finish this. But... Um, it, you can see it's not that bad if like you've been playing DDO for a while you you would remember back when like this used to be impossible to do at low level you you had to be what back when they used to elite buff the mobs they, they used to hit so hard it used to just be impossible to do this but now like I'm not doing that bad at level 23 against these CR 39s. Like, they, I think they made the game a lot easier to play. And so, like, this dude's going to be a CR-44. Uh, years ago, he would have just, like, one-shot at me. But now I can kind of, you know, like, it's, I'm not going to obliterate him immediately. But he's not, like, one-shotting me. He actually really isn't hurting me. It's just he's very resistant to my damage. So, um, so usually what I do is all these key quests I'll farm at cat. Like I do them at max level because I want the max XP. And the closer I get to like cap, the the quicker this goes. You know. So usually what I'll do for the the early twenties is I just farm keys. You know, I get myself like 50 or 100 keys, and then once I have enough of those keys, then I usually will come in here and do this particular quest because it's super quick. Um, but I also like, once I get into the mid-20s, to start doing that Minotaur quest, uh, because that one is the, like the biggest, for the time, it's like the biggest payout. But, you know, I mean, like I was saying when I started the stream, this is sort of like brain dead content. In other words, like it's very repetitive. So usually what I do when I do this is I watch a movie. You know, if I'm doing this alone, I'm listening to an audiobook. I'm watching a movie. I, yeah. Oh, I know. Because when so speaking about expired ingredients, when they first started this event, I took all the ingredients out of my bank and I just had them in my backpack. I forgot to get rid of them and I started doing this and I couldn't tell the old one, the old mats from the new mats. Like it was super frustrating. So I ended up like pausing the event because I read that they were going to patch it. And then once I came back, I could see the difference, the difference. And so then I was able to like throw, throw away all of the old ingredients and keep only the new ingredients uh the other thing i'm upset about that they changed and i don't know how you guys feel about this but if you remember the old school candies you used to be able to click them and activate a buff on your account that would last you i think what was the old candy buff wasn't it like an hour long i think it was something like that like it maybe it was a half hour maybe it was an hour or something like that. but now all that candy is like i think it's 20 seconds so I don't even bother getting any of it anymore. Forty-one thousand XP is really good, but I did that super slow, five minutes and four seconds. Like, so it's not worth me doing that. Like the whole point of doing this one would be to do it in under a minute. And my DPS is just isn't there. But I also did not have any powdered ruby. So I wasn't able to fireball. Which basically hobbled my DPS. So we're going to go pick up some spell components. So they're going to start the new event next Wednesday. I'll be there. I'll be doing my guild on that new server. Um... I, I'm imagining it's going to launch exactly how, like, I, I posted the YouTube videos about the event on my YouTube channel. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be exactly what I posted because I don't think they would have had time to change much about it. Although, I think they were investigating 
changing the lantern from a trinket into a cosmetic. Whether or not that actually happens, who knows, but... I have to read about it. I just haven't read about it. I just got a mummy rot poison hit. All right, there. Do I still have mummy rot? No. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm so over being a sorcerer. I'm so over being like a wild mage. I can't stand it anymore. I like need a change. Like, I enjoyed it for the first life a lot. And the second life, I was like, all right, now I'm starting to get frustrated with it. And now this third life, I'm like super done with it. I can't. I don't want to do it anymore. I think it's conceptually very interesting. And I think if you were doing like pen and paper role playing, a wild mage would be super fun because there's a lot of unexpected things and you could really build probably an interesting character arc around how that person deals with the unpredictability or maybe they themselves are unpredictable. Um, but for an MMO where we, we really, we can RP, but we don't, there's not RP built into this game. We're just playing a video game. It's super like frustrating to be CC'd all the time buy a black pot or whether I cast dance on myself or whether I root myself. It's just super annoying. The other thing too is they made the Eladrin uh, body. The body type is a human. And so I'm not used to the extra like size of the, of the character model. Like usually I'm on an elf, which is a little smaller. So, like, I'm just kind of done. The, the, the cosmetics look a little bit different on an elf. But this is what I was talking about. Like, I use a, the cane as my shield. Um, my shield cosmetic. So, even if the cosmetic from the new shield for this event is super cool, I won't ever not use this cane. I mean, I would use a different cane if they came out with another cane that was even better than that one. But, like, so I won't use... I won't use the shield cosmetic. I probably will never not use this hardcore season one cloak. So like while I have a collection of all the different cloaks, I have a cosmetic tune. I have all the different cloaks. I could show you guys the cosmetic tune sometime if you wanted to see it. But I have everything that I have on my account on that tune, but I don't ever wear it. This particular cloak. I also back when they used to do the winter event that you could put like a festival uh, effect on it. I, I put, if you can see, like I put fire resist on it, fire resist 10. So when I wear it, like I get a buff to my fire resistance. So like there's not yet even another reason why I wouldn't take it off to wear something else. You know, it's not only is it like a really cool hardcore season one cosmetic, but it gives me a buff that I can, I get right out of the box at level one. When I reincarnate, I have 10 fire resist, which is huge at like low level. That's, that's super good. So the only thing I really can see myself farming for in the new event is to go after whatever the mounts are. I, and I have not seen a picture of the mounts. Does anybody know in chat? Do they give us a picture of those mounts that, that we'll be playing for? No. It's typical SSG to not show us anything or tell us anything until the event's already started. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have not, but it would be nice if they did, right? Because it would be nice to plan like, oh, I really like that. I want to go after that. I think it's a saber tooth tiger, right? Something like that. I think it's pretty ironic too because the Diablo 4 expansion, all the new mounts are are like cats, like saber tooth cats, tigers, panthers. Like, so it seems to be, I don't know why we're currently in like a cat mount meta. They did show it. Oh, okay. It's on the forum. All right, great. I'm going to have to look at that. That's good to know. What do you guys think of it? Were you, were you impressed? Does it look really cool? 
Like, what was the first thing you thought when you saw these cosmetics? Were you like, oh my god, I can't wait to go play for these? Or were you like, oh yeah, that's okay. They're kind of cool. I'm the type of person, if they put me in charge, I would want to make the stuff so... Like, so cool that I would I would want people to feel, like, terrified that if they missed it, they would miss out on getting the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah. So your first thought was, you don't need any more mounts. I mean, so that says it all right there, man. And that's the problem. I think another thing that this event has going against it is the fact that it is a, um, a VIP only. Now, I don't think that's necessarily bad inherently. However, there are a lot of players in GDO who are free to play, who are not VIPs. Like, it, it's more than half the... That's what I noticed for all the different hardcore scenes that I did. Like, most of the people who play are not VIPs. There, there are a lot of VIPs. Like, I'm a VIP, but it, well, I think a lot more people just log in and play for free. Which is great. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever played Path of Exile. Like, I'm completely free, Path of Exile. I've never put a dime into that game. And that game is set up so that you don't ever need to put a dime into it. Like, you can buy stuff that's convenient. You can buy cosmetics uh, over there in that game. But you don't need to spend a dime on it uh, to play it. And you get the entire game. Um, I keep advocating for them to do that in TDO, by the way. Like, it's, it's something that I mention every time I go to the test server. Like, I think that they need to make it so that when you are free to play, you get exactly the same game experience as you get when you're a VIP. Now, obviously, you're not going to get the expansions, but neither do the VIPs, right? Like, the VIPs still have to buy things like Myth Draenor. Um, obviously, you got to buy the expansion. That's different, but... I think a free-to-play should get everything that the VIPs get, and then I think the VIPs should get something extra. What I keep telling them to do is what they do in Fallout 76. If you guys have ever played that, I'm not recommending you play it. I don't really like it, but um, if you're a VIP in that game, they give you free, unlimited uh, shared storage. How cool would that be for this game, right? Like, you sub, you're a VIP, and now you're shared storage. You can just throw a, a million things in there. You unsub and then you can't throw anything in there. And so you the, you hit the level that you own to pull out. So let's say you own 100 slots. You wouldn't be able to put anything in your shirt bank until you took out under 100, you know, so you have it down under 100. But I think, why not? Why couldn't they do that? You know, I mean, data is, um, you know, space on servers is super cheap these days. And if they're worried about, like, I think the way that the characters in GDO work is that everything I have in my bank is brought with me no matter where I go when I zone in. So, like, I'm running around but technically invisible, like there's a giant bank floating around with me. But even if that were the case, that's the character bank. We're talking about making unlimited shared bank, not character bank. So, I don't know. Am I also taking my shared bank with me everywhere I go? I, I don't know. If that's the case, then maybe they just need to redesign the way the banks work. Which would take money, right? They always talk about they have a limited... You know, they have to make decisions. And they're trying to address lag. And they're trying to add new content and stuff. I think they do a fantastic job, by the way. But there is definitely room for them to, like, you know, get some of these things working better and um you know like bank lag is is real right like bank i noticed that on the new 64-bit server like when i went to open my bank I, it was like i had to wait you know whatever it is 10 or 20 seconds we said that's not the case in other video games so it's this particular one i think they just need to optimize it there's a word for it i'm not going to remember what that is but 
So I think that would be a really good, good VIP bonus to just give us unlimited shared storage. And then let the free people have the same game experience. Like a great example of what I'm talking about. And I don't know how, um, how you guys feel about this, but I think the fact that a, a free to play player cannot just go into an elite quest makes no sense. Like they shouldn't be forced to do normal and then hard and then elite. They should just be able to open elite. Like there's no, I can't, I can't think of a reason why like that would make the game experience better for somebody free to, to encourage them to stay to play which is what we want we want to encourage people to log in and, and play right even if they're free if they're here they might spend money on something else they might buy a cosmetic or they might you know buy an expansion pack if they really like the free gameplay but if we're nickel and diming them and making them run quests on normal like, nobody runs quests on normal unless they have to, and the only people who have to are the free people who have to do normal and then hard and then elite. I haven't normal quested? Bro, like, when the game first launched in, in 2000, what was it, 2006, um, everybody used to normal quest. Nobody did elite questing. Everybody did normal. It wasn't until we started doing, like, the loot farming at the end game out in the um, the ruins of Threnal where we started pushing the loot farming t to elite and then you know it became the, the sort of the meta for everybody to sort of you do everything on normal and then once you unlock the quest that you could farm the last chest then you do that one on elite but the content was really really challenging back when the game first started so like it wasn't like you want to just run around doing elite because it was there was no reason. There was also only 10 levels, so it wasn't like you needed to speed level. And there were no past lives. You want to know something else about when the game first launched? This is something I think about all the time. There was no such thing as boss immunities. Boss immunities didn't exist. So if you could go in and like... Um, it, when the game first started, the one of the biggest weapons to have like that would make you into uber giga chad was to have a wounding weapon because you could knock knock a monster's constitution down and kill it and people used to do that to the bosses because they, they didn't have the boss immunity so people would just smack them with wounding weapons those all those giants that were in like tempest spine when that raid first came out um what happened obviously is that people were able to using these weapons kill the bosses so fast uh, that they eventually, not long after, put all the boss immunities in, which I complained about then. I thought, that, I just think it's stupid. I think if you're going to work for something or quest or play all the time and you get a piece of gear like a Vorpal Blade or a Wounding Weapon, or if you make a build like that can one-shot a boss in two seconds, that you earn that reward because you put in the time to get it. I don't think that like, having immunities built into the bosses is a good idea. Obviously, when you talk about like pushing phases, you need them, right? Because a lot of like raid bosses, for example, you have phases. Um, and some mini quest bosses might have phases, but I don't like the idea of like bosses and champions. Like we have champions that have boss immunities. You can't you can't CC them, you can't knock them down. It's just it's stupid. I think that if you attack a monster, it should be, you should be able, and you have like a crazy special attack, you should be able to do it. Because it, with the logic of having boss immunities, um, it means like we make them immune to things like critical hits too, right? Like, and some people are like making builds around like critical hits. If you're doing like a Sword of Shadows melee build, right? So, I mean... I think that they should just allow you to do whatever it is that you're going to do. Same thing, I feel the same way about, like, the insta-kill builds. Like, um, you know, Pale Masters who can just run around hitting things with Finger of Death. I think you should totally be able to uh, hit a boss with Finger of Death and kill it in one shot. That's absolutely... If you spend the time to make a character that can do it, you should be able to have that as a reward for all your hard work.
And then people would really want you in their groups or their raids because you'd be able to make everything go really quick and easy. You know, it would just allow... Um, it's one of the things, like, if you do a, um, a fiend warlock and you try to hurl something through hell, there are things that are completely immune to that. I don't think anything should be immune to that. I think you should be able to hurl it. So. If they put me in charge, I <laughs> would... I would probably try to change some things. I don't know if people would enjoy the changes, but I think it would be a little bit more what you find in pen and paper as opposed to what you find in an MMO. You know? I have to get rid of the pea soup sickness. There we go. Yeah, I mean, they're supposed to be a challenge. So it, it just comes down to, like, um, the type of challenges that you that you give to players, right? So I, what I, I think the, the best way to say it is I think just making something immune, unless it's thematic, right? Like, obviously like an undead it thematically makes sense if it's immune to fear because right because it we can understand like how that would be the case but um i think what they should do then is just build in like more challenge into the actual like what you're setting out to do not just make the boss not just slow you down on the boss by making the boss immune obviously like you know i'm this is just me giving my opinion it's not a lot of games do have bosses that are completely immune to things. But it is something that's interesting about this particular game, Dungeons & Dragons Online, the lore, uh, that when this game first launched, that none of the bosses were immune to anything. And then they added that because players were just obliterating bosses super quick. Uh, so rather than like designing the quests to slow them down, they just basically made the boss immunities to slow them down. Uh, we see that if you ever go and do um, Stormcleave Outpost, it's a good example of what I'm talking about, how uh, the boss used to be really hard to kill, but the immunities, you could use those shards to like strip off the immunities. And nowadays, people have so much power that I don't think anybody even needs to use those shards anymore. They can usually just run up and kill the boss. So I think that it's good that players can do that. It's good that you don't need to use the shards anymore because you're, you've you invested a lot of time into your character that you have the power to do that. But if for some reason you didn't, you can still earn the shards and you can go through and do those side doors to, to get the methods and the whatever it is that, that powers his armor up or whatever. Um, but I don't think I've done the shards in years. Like, if I go and do Stormcleave, I just run in and kill him. So. Yeah, R10, right. I, I honestly think they should give us more levels, too. Like, R10 is, is cool, but I think they need to add R100. I'm, you know, they, they do in Diablo, they have a something called the Pit, and... It's similar in the sense that you can pick your level. So you can do pit level one. And there are certain milestones. So like pit 20 unlocks something, pit 40 unlocks something, pit 65 unlocks something, whatever. But it, I think you can dial it all the way up to 200, I think. It's either like 150 or 200. It's really high and it starts to get super, super difficult around like 60. So if you can do over a hundred, you're like really strong. If you can do like towards 150-ish, you've got like a god character. And there are people, I think um, people are posting like on, on Twitter, X, whatever, uh, that they're doing pit. I see people posting pit over 100 now in this latest expansion. It's super impressive. So I think they need the same thing from basically what I'm getting at. I think they need the same sort of an idea for DDO to give us uh, like sort of the unachievable ladder for people to chase who really like to, to power game. 
um, you know, add in our 200 and then let people and make it so that like R50 is super, super tough, right? Like not like R10 now, people can just blast R10 and just kill the thing really quick, like really hard. And then let's see how, how high up people can push that. I think people would, I think it would be super popular if you could do up to R200. To, to post uh, like you'd have a whole forum area of seeing how people could get over 50 over 100 i i, I think it would be a great um way to uh, to sort of tap into the power gamers in the community and they certainly are there like think about all the people sitting around with 350 reaper levels and all the past lives like they are looking for something like that to do and it would have to be sort of virtually impossible. Like you're talking about, like if you go over R100, like the shit is so ridiculously hard to do. But I think it would be cool. I totally would support them doing something like that. I also think that while like people are against the power creep of reaper i think that it's not they've already like let that genie out of the box so i don't think that they should um i think they need to redesign the the reaper trees and make them a little bit more like if you've played path of exile or diablo like how you have the paragon board where they you it's just like thousands of different skills and abilities that you can pick and make your build really complex i think rather than having just the very simple reaper trees that give you that straight power boost that you know if they allowed you to do stuff in the reaper trees that was more esoteric and required a little bit more like power gaming thinking I think the community would embrace it because I think we have people here who like to game like that. Like it's, it would be a challenge game that you only participate in if you want to, like there'd be no reason. In other words, there'd be no reason to like theory craft. If you were just ever only going to do low level Reaper, you could still just blast through it. But if you wanted to start pushing like really high level Reaper, then you would have to sort of theory craft into a build that was super min max, that kind of thing. I don't know, we'll see what they do with it. They're talking about like how they're going to change it for the future, but everything in this game, when they do changes like that takes a while it's not like they do that stuff quickly so the only thing in this game that they've ever done super quick were, were the horses we got the horses like overnight like it was one day i logged in and they're like oh yeah by the way we're adding horses it wasn't like a long discussion this suddenly we had them Okay, I'm getting really close to leveling. This is great. We're going to do one more and then we'll go level up. Yeah, that dragon, that was great. That was like 300k or something like that. You know, sometimes they all like group up on me and other times I, it's really hard to get their attention. So when does Maybar end? I have not yet earned enough to get my, my new horse. Not that I need it, I'll, I won't use it, but I'm wondering like, is this the last weekend for it? Usually they keep it running and through Halloween so I'm hoping that you know I'm hoping that they do that like they don't shut it off until like November 2nd or something like that but that means that the new event is going to be running concurrently with the Halloween event and it also means that on the new server we should have the Halloween event right like
How did he not instantly die? He's a shadow when I hit him with a sunburst. The cast time on Delayed Blast Fireball is so cool. You can just spam it, and it's so great. If every spell were as cool as Delayed Blast Fireball, it would be really fun to be a caster. I used to double hit them, like I used to do uh, Delayed Blast Fireball Meteor Swarm, but they nerfed Meteor Swarm, so it's not even worth casting it anymore. Fireball is up quick enough that I can just spam it. And sometimes I, if I target the right one, I get the whole group immediately, and other times, like that right there, I got the whole group, but other times I miss one. So let me try to get these. Did I get them all? I got them all. Yeah. You get into a groove, and you can start planting them, so you do a one-hit kill on the entire group. You can just make it through this in, like, two minutes. Um, bro, I'm like, so close to leveling, it's obscene, 2,000 points away. Shards for completion. Going to go to, where am I going to go? Let's go to Salt Marsh. I just need to find one rare, basically, to get the XP to level. So maybe the ghost is there. Yeah, I've not been here yet, right? Like, because I TR'd on an iconic i did whatever i needed to do to get to level 20 and then all i've done at level 20 is the maybar stuff so i don't think i've been any slayer zones or anything yet so is the ghost here no the ghost is not here we'll see though maybe i can kill yeah there it is okay great What am I going to take? I don't know. Um, Charisma. And probably we'll take... Intensify. So none of these things would really help. Like, yeah, I'd get more spell points, but I'm not doing Burning Hands, Scorch, or Fireball, even though I'm Fire Sword spec. Uh, the Light as a Chaos Mancer, like I could do Chaos, and then my Chaos Sphere would get a lot, like would get a big boost, but because most of what I'm doing is not Chaos Bolt, Wild Strike. I'm just basically spamming Fireball with Chaos Sphere here and there. Um, I don't think it would be that big an add to, I think a better use of this, I mean, this would be okay, but I think a better use of it would be just to get Intensify. It'll give me a bigger payout later and I'll get the, I'll still get the bonus spell points. But then I can, you know, cause I'm doing a lot of, um, like, now I can intensify my color spray. You know, I could intensify this Arcane Tempest if I want. I, I can Now I can intensify my Shard Storm. Like, there's just a lot of stuff. 
Now I can intensify my chaos sphere. So even though I didn't raise this, the caster level, I just intensified it. So I, it, it's just going to have a bigger payout for us to, to intensify all this stuff. I could meta magic this, but honestly, it doesn't really need it. I'm basically doing that just to blind stuff anyway. Um, all this other stuff, like, I'm not really even casting it anymore. So. And then what we want to do is check and see what we've got for gear at this level, right? Like. Plus two DC. Yeah, embolden is great. Yeah, so eventually I'll I'll pick that up. I will. I'll pick up embolden. I usually save that though because, um. I think that having like the extra damage early is better. But I mean, it's just a, a flavor thing, right? Like you 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 bring up a great point. Like embolden certainly would have helped me. Uh. But. Eventually we'll get there. Probably that's what I'll take at level 30. So I have a belt. I have a belt upgrade. Con 11, Insightful Spell 16. I crafted it. Insightful Con 5. To replace the Con uh, 10, Insightful Con 4, Spell versus 15. Uh, on that one we have one of the old Sapphires of Crushing Wave. And then a Topaz of Wizardry. This one just has an upgraded Topaz of Wizardry. Only as a green slot. But it's still an, it's an upgrade. It will make our spell resist and our, our hit points go up a little bit. Yeah, so I've got, got almost 1,200 hit points right now. Which is pretty cool. And my spell resist on this Aladrin is 50. That's not, like, great. But for this normal content where I'm running around uh, doing the Maybar stuff, it's it's pretty good. It looks like I've got some mats. I have 23 keys. It's pretty good. It looks like I got 46 dragon scales for doing that dragon run. Uh, that's a pretty decent amount of scales to get just doing the dragon once. So how much is it to get the horse? Do I need, what, like 250 or something like that? I've got almost 10,000 chocolate. That's from using this draft of midnight. Uh, 23 keys. That's a pretty decent amount of keys. Going to get a new cup of tea. Gonna stretch and... Get something to drink. Yeah, yeah, Vider remembers wounding and puncturing. Yeah, back in the day, that was what everybody did. Oh, when this game first came out, it was very melee heavy. I mean, it still is a little bit, right? But, like, melee was king for the first year of this game. So people used to do, use things like the Iron Cleaver from Storm Cleave and just run around, kind of, you know, hitting everything. And then I remember a dude who found a Vorpal uh, sword and, like, he used it so much. This is before, like, stuff would bind your account. You could, they had a ritual that you could bind it, but this was even before that. Um, he used that Vorpal sword so much, and this is back when you just needed to roll a 20. You didn't have to confirm it. You just had to roll a 20. So, like, you roll a 20, the thing would die. And uh, he used it so much that it, like, lost all of its durability. It had one blue sliver left, and the entire thing was red. 
and he was only able to like hit one thing with it before it was unusable and then he'd have to go repair it and hope that he didn't brick it <laughs> now he technically not that it matters because Forpool isn't really good anymore but like they sell the the on the store like a uh, oil that you can fix a weapon that's broken like that they didn't have anything like that back then so totally different um so let's see before i go get my tea what am i looking for here how many of these is it so i don't care about that uh 240 bro that is just insane what do i even care about the green mount no not really it's not bad right these mounts are good they're they're cool but i have the regular one right like i have this one and the new version would just basically have instead of these blue eyes like this blue aura it would be green right but to be honest i never use it because i i spent so much time earning this hardcore mount like this hardcore mount was so difficult for me to get that i don't ever use anything other than the hardcore mount right so even if i farm for that and use it i won't i mean have it i probably won't use it so 240 yeah i mean it's exactly yeah that's what i was saying i used to sell them but now <sighs> they're oh dude did they unbind these What the? <laughs> wow, like my brain is exploding. So they unbound these. Yeah, yeah. All right. I thank you. I appreciate you correcting me. I understand what you're saying. I thought you were talking about these because these weren't ever bound. But if you looked at the like I bro, I just threw out a thousand that were from like last year that were all bound to my account. I couldn't, I tried to, like I would have sold them off in the past, but I couldn't. So it's really cool that now you can sell these again. Well, that's cool. That means that anything that's left over, I'm going to try to sell it. Awesome. Well, that's exciting, right? That so for for anyone who's going to do the new VIP server, um, farming those mats on that server probably isn't a bad idea because it would allow you to like initiate an economy on a in a new environment, right? Like anything that we can we can use to sort of um, buy sell to to make money on that new server nobody's going to have anything because it's going to be new for the the new event the new hardcore event whatever um so it might be something to do although probably i won't do it over there and the other thing too is like um do, do we know yet if we earn the cosmetics on that server are they going to be available for our account on every server so like if i go to the lantern server i make my character i farm i get a cosmetic can i use it on sarlona or is it only going to be on the the new server that that i wasn't sure of when i read and we're, we're listening to people talk during the friday at four i i missed if people talked about whether or not we were going to get them. Usually what they do, if you earn something, you have an account lock and you can go to any server and get it. So like I can go to any server and get all my hardcore rewards, but nobody specifically said anything about the Lantern event being able to do that. So I'm just, I'm not going to assume that that's the case. I If I do spend the time though to earn 
like a hardcore reward on Cormir, I would absolutely like to claim it on Sarlona. I think that would be, you know, what everybody would sort of want. Um, yeah, I'm going to go AFK just to refresh my tea. And I will leave this up if you guys are curious about the build that I'm running. So this is it. This is the entire build right here. I think you can see all of it. Maybe that's better. Right? Maybe that's better. Yeah, so that's all the epic stuff and then epic stuff here and then this is the heroic stuff here. Very simple. Just in the Chaos Mancer. Most of it's in Wild Mage and then Fade Arc, I did 33 points. And then over here, I'm doing Primal Shadow and Unyielding Sentinel Shadow Dancer. So here, normally, right, you do Exalted Angel because Exalted Angel is S tier. It gets Exalted Flight, which is the core tier three um, with the wings where you can fly around, which is the best thing in the game. Uh, so you always want to take Exalted Angel, um, but I'm not going to take it. First of all, because for this particular event, I get access to the Shadow Caster in Shadow Dancer, which makes me immune to energy drain. That way, I don't need to worry about during this farming. If I run, a, if I'm in a zone, I'm running really fast. I don't have to remember to hit this Death Ward potion to pr remember to not get level drained. Uh, and the other thing that's good about the Shadow Caster is that not only does it make my spell cooldowns faster, but I don't have to, it cannot be stripped off, like so a Lich or a, a Beholder can't dispel my Death Ward, like it's basically, now it's permanent on me. And then everything else over here, all of my like spell power, DPS, I'm doing Heart, which is basically Light and Fire, which is exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing Alignment Light, which is my Color Spray, my Sunburst. Arcane Tempest doesn't count, but that's sort of like a weird spell. Um, and then fire, and then chaos sphere is technically light. Springstorm is electric, doesn't really matter. It's a good spell. It's only five spell points. It's my SLA from my racial. It, it's okay. It hits pretty good. Um, I'm not really doing anything to boost electric power, nor am I doing anything to boost acid spell power. Um, but both charge storm and that hit pretty well. Arcane storm is uh, arcane tempest used to be an epic spell. It does force damage. It hits really hard. And it's super good. It's probably like an S tier spell. It's one of the best spells that we have. Uh, it used to be epic. Now it's just a regular spell. So I always take it because it hits harder than just about anything else. So even though I'm not specced into force damage, it's still really good. And then I have all these other spells over here, but I'm not really using them. Like I could use Acid Well if I wanted. I could Prismatic Spray things if I wanted, but I, I don't need it. But the Delayed Blast Fireball and the Chaos Sphere and my Color Spray and the it's just blowing everything away anyway and then in this tree unyielding i get defensives but i mostly i'm here just for renewal that's really all i care about getting this divine energy is nice but renewal is sort of like the best single target self-heal that we can get cocoon is really good too but renewal is even better so like running with both of them i'm pretty much unkillable unless something catches me by surprise and nothing really will catch me by surprise in this Maybar event. Um, even the dra like we saw the dragon explosion didn't hurt me. So um, I could blast my evoke DCs here since I'm spamming fireball, which I think I will. Uh, but normally what I would do if I were making this build like legit, this would be enchantment because I would want to buff my hold monster. And then over here... If I kept this or if I went into Exalted Angel, this one would become Illusion. So I think you can get Illusion in Exalted Angel too. I might be wrong. Uh, if it's, It might have to be Evocation. So I'm not doing Necro. I could technically take Enchantment here. And then take, you know, um, Evoke for this one. Just depends conjuration would also work but for now we're just going to do evoke because we're spamming all these fireballs uh, i'll probably respect this again and like i said once i hit level 30 i'm going to tr i'm not going to cap 
um, I'm going to get out, out of this and I'm going to go back to being a, uh, a warlock. Um, yeah, so I'll keep that open. And then if anybody else is wondering my Reaper points, that's how I have my Reaper points. So I'll let you guys like examine that while I go and refresh my drink. Back. Oh, nice. I see what you're saying. Oh, old mats got bound so you couldn't post them. Yeah, people do that all the time, or at least they used to do that, right? They would flood the market with all the expired mats. Super annoying if you were trying to buy, like, mats. I've done that before in the past, bought the wrong ones, like, bought expired ones by accident. Super annoying. I had that happen in Star Wars The Old Republic. I accidentally bought something that was um, posted really expensive and it was complete garbage. And it like it was all the money that I had in the in my on my account. Like it was a bad day. Hope you guys are having a good Friday evening. Who knows what I have on my t-shirt. Show you what I have on my t-shirt. See if you guys recognize it. Does anybody know where this shirt comes from? It's kind of old school, but it's a video game. We'll do the reveal later. I'll tell you guys the story of the t-shirt. Uh, enough keys for now. Uh, dragon. In order for me to get the most mats, I need to do it on cap, right? Or is it five levels? I forget. It's been a long time. I forget what they do with the maximum amount of materials, right? Isn't it five levels? So we can do an experiment, right? I have 46. If I do this on 29, will I still get... 46 or is it gated does anybody know it used to be five levels right to get the maximum amount of materials so we'll we'll try it since i don't see anybody five levels max thank you vider thank you okay so 29 It just five levels is a lot faster. Like 29 would be a lot faster than 39. And I'm just going to lead everything in here and just. Dimension door. Smart.
I CC'd myself. <laughs> I hate wild magic. I agree. I, I always take it as soon as I can get to Mention Door. Yeah, it's definitely, if we're, we're ranking spells, it's definitely an S tier spell. Absolutely. Am I good? I'm good. Okay. Oh, I missed that one. I think they should give us this dragon as a mount. And I don't think they should alter the size. I think that we should get this gigantic dragon as a mount. Why not? Right? Why not? Yeah, if they put me in charge, people would be able to earn a giant mount like this and you'd be able to ride it around. Kind of like the Githyanki from Baldur's Gate, right? To ride around on the giant red dragons. There we go. Okay. All right, so now you're saying I I did it, I did it. So I can just get out of here, right? Hopefully. Hopefully I didn't bork it by leaving early. Yeah, there it is. She she timed out. That's good. Because otherwise if you don't, you have to wait for her, right? Like, she takes a while to kind of do her little reset thing, so. Uh, that's good, good, good. The, the truth is, these red traps don't even really hurt. If you fire them off, it doesn't really matter. Like there, I just accidentally fired one off. Or it already is triggered, but it's not really doing anything. Alright, that should be that. Good. So, did we bypass the ghosts by Dimension Dooring? I mean, we may have, like... Yes. Oh, that's great. It's so cool. That makes this a lot easier. Those ghosts are super annoying. It does indicate, though, that the code is not correct, right? Like, you shouldn't be able to... Dim dimension Dooring should not turn the ghosts off. Like, the fact that it does is weird. But we'll take it. We'll take it as a short-term buff.
Okay, going on the ramp triggers them. Pay no attention to me. I'm just running by. There we go. Maybe I can get her quick. It's a lot lower level. She's a lot easier. Is she going to do that thing where she phases? Nope. Awesome. I mean, 36,000 XP is really good. This is pretty quick. 7 minutes, 15. Yeah, even with the Dimension Door trick. So... But we have 92 scales now. Yeah, so that's great. 5 levels max. Pretty awesome. Uh, we'll take a break on that one for a bit. We'll do grave work. This one here, I can never... I have to remember to, to mention or this one too, because... At the end, if I do the cannon that fires me back to the beginning there, for some reason I never get it to shoot straight, and I always end up flying into the side of a mountain. So I just did an invisible run by those initial ones. And then here, sometimes I invis, but I don't think we even need to. This is not the Great Pumpkin, it's the Supreme Pumpkin. For all the Charlie Brown fans out there. Alright, so here I am Biz. You don't have to invis here, but I do just because of these blights. They'll follow you and shoot you from far, far away if you don't, but they, they'll still see me anyway. Sometimes this one will shoot me, like, way far off, too, but most of the time it works. Gonna drop an arcane storm right on his head. There we go. Uh, I don't know why I'm phased out. He's almost dead, though. Alright, we just need to kill these extras to get the extra star, right? 
We get them all? Uh, looks like we got them all. Okay, and then rather than using the cannon to go back, I'm going to use my dimension door. So that's pretty good. Three minutes. Three minutes for, what, 30-something thousand XP? Like, it's the best XP that you can earn per minute in the game. That's why this event is so cool. I like this one, too. The Snitch and the Lich is pretty cool. This is something that I usually run, like, just to blast cinnamon. I remember this mummy lord used to be so tough back before they did like the stat squish a couple years ago. I think the stat squish was one of the best things that they did. It definitely made the game a lot more fun. Alright, so this dude won't take damage from my low-level spells, so... Just have to basically uh, Tempest him. 30,000 XP in 1 minute and 30 seconds. Like, how good is... That's really good. Really, really good. Yeah, I can't believe that dude, he did, what, you said 10 epic pass lives in one Halloween season? That's a shit ton. That is a lot. It's really good. There's so much power in the epic pass lives, too, that, like, that is totally worth it. It's, it's worth the time. If you're, if you're doing the, um, the TR train, like, if you're trying to chase the triple completionist... This is definitely the time to get your epic pass lives. I feel like haste doesn't really work anymore. Is that just me? Like, I feel like it really doesn't haste us. I just turned myself into stone. That's so stupid. <laughs> Gotta love wild magic. Yeah, one iconic. I mean, that's reasonable, right? Like, that's normal. I think if you were going to, like, you know, just play nonstop... And be sort of degenerate about it, you know, then people try to, like, farm crazy amounts. I've done it in the past. I, I, I'm I, glad I'm done with it. I've only... I decided I'm... I'm not interested in doing past lives or grinding anything on any other characters except for this main character. Right? Like, I have no desire to do another... Um, I do have some characters that have, like extra past lives but it was just sort of like accidental it wasn't anything that i did uh on purpose i just don't have the um the mental fortitude to like invest that much it, 18 it's an 18 year old game right like i love it but there's just some you know i just don't have the desire to to do that you know multiple tune blasting 
I used to, back in the day, like, when I used to raid a lot, I used to have a bunch of different raid tunes, maybe like 10 different raid tunes. That's why some of my tunes have past lives. Like, I had a raid healer. Um, and then I had a, whatever the DPSs were. Usually I did, like, sorcerer or DPS. But it's going back a long ways. Like it's been a lot of years since I raided in this game. Uh, you know, regularly. In this here, I'm not even going to play around with these dudes. I'm just going to run all the way in. See if I can pop a purple alert. Maybe. Alright, here we go. So I'll get a Tempest up. There's a chance I can die. Right? Like if it goes to a purple alert. I think the alerts stop though. Yeah, I don't have an alert. Those zombies back there gave up. Does anyone in chat playing Dragon Age Veilguard? I thought about playing it and then I looked, watched the trailer and then I decided that I probably wouldn't enjoy it. I, I was a huge fan of Origins. Like, it's one of my favorite games. I absolutely love Origins. And then I, I like Dragon Age 2 as well. It was pretty good. It wasn't as good, but it was pretty good. But. I wasn't a huge fan of Inquisition. I don't really like the Frostbite engine at all. I didn't like what they did with the story direction and th thought the writing was a lot worse than Origins. Origins uh, was a really great story with really good characters and I wasn't that impressed with Inquis Inquisition. So I decided I probably wasn't going to play Vale and then I watched the trailer and I didn't really like what I saw so probably not going to play it. But it would be nice to hear if somebody were playing it and they were enjoying it. Pretty close in the field to D&D, &D, you know, Dragon Age. Sort of the same genre, uh, just a different rule set. Been playing since launch. Your main has all the epics in short two racials of completionist yeah so you're very close to what i am i'm i'm very close to that i have all the epics i have all the racials except for like one i think and then i'm only missing i have all the heroics um i think i'm only missing my iconic tabaxi so i think i'm not i'm really close to being done I've, like I've said, I'm not in a rush. I don't really care. Like, eventually I'll get it, and yeah, okay. There's no real push to get it. And then every time, like, I think, wow, I might actually get it, then they release a new race or something. So. A new race, a new epic. I would love for them to give us new epics. And with the changes that they made to the player's handbook, I, I'm wondering if they're going to, uh, if the overlords are going to make them change the, you know, the racial past lives into species past lives. I wonder if Hasbro is going to require all of the assets to be updated or if they're only going forward going to 
for the new books. Like, I wonder if they're not going to worry about, like, legacy content. Because that's a thing. Like, if you get the new books, the books are out now, right? Um, 2024, Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, Dungeon Master's Guide. They have um, changed the Player's Handbook, so you can no longer make, like, a half-elf. And they're not calling races races anymore. They call them species. Um, there's no more half orcs. There's no half giants. There's no like half anything. It's basically you're an elf. You're an elf. I think that it's extremely like short sighted and dumb to to alter the lore after 50 years considering that and i made a video about this on my youtube channel that it's not even D, &D specific lore like half elves and half orcs go way beyond D, &D. like tolkien wrote about them other fantasy writers wrote about stuff like that uh so like i think it's stupid to sort of try to retcon it to fit today and then i think what's going to happen anyway is that most people will probably uh just homebrew and allow players like if i were doing a campaign if i were dungeon mastering a campaign and somebody's like yeah i want to play a half elf because shadow heart was a half elf in Baldur's gate 3 and she's my favorite character i would say fine play a half elf and then we would just use the rules like we i would homebrew the rules from like previous edition and i think that's exactly what everybody's gonna do so from my perspective just because you don't put it in print doesn't mean that it's not going to exist and you know if you're if you're that out of touch with your players i don't think that's a good thing overall for the business so my opinion anyway but I talked about this a little on my YouTube channel and here when we would do like some news and one of the interesting things was that the Wizards of the Coast president stepped down, someone who I think made a bunch of bad decisions and then for a while they didn't have a president and then they got a new president, I forget the dude's name, but he has a lot of experience working in video games and used to work for Blizzard, so I think that is an overall W for D&D, &D because I think having somebody with experience in the video game world, especially Blizzard, right, um, will be able to sort of look at the players of D&D &D and sort of maybe meet our wants and expectations a little bit better. You know, like I don't, I'm probably not going to pick up these new books because I think it's really stupid to get rid of half elves. Right? Like, I, as a Tolkien fan, I, Elrond is one of my favorite characters. Um, it, it just doesn't make any sense why, why they would do that. Beyond, like, some, you know, extremely short-sighted political agenda that makes, that has nothing to do with the game. You know? So, certainly has nothing to do with the fantasy worlds where people are going to make them anyway. Especially fans of, like, Baldur's Gate, right? Like, if they want to play a Githyanki, if they want to play a half-elf like Shadowheart. Um, who else was a half, um... I could have swore somebody else in that game was. Isn't Shahira, or is Shahira a straight, uh, like, a full elf? Maybe she is a full elf, because she's lived so long. Oh, God, I just... Did I ruin that? I think I did. Yeah, I pulled that one too many times. Getting lag. So we should do a wager. Do you think the new server will be lag-free? Yes or no? I should set up something in chat 
like, a question. I just don't know how to do it on the fly. Eventually, someday, when I get a moderator, I'll be able to do that. Um, I don't think they're going to be lag-free. I think we're going to get lag, because when I was on the test server, I experienced lag. So, I mean, I think it's the code itself, like, our... But just the native code has lag. You get it? No. Ah, uh, that one. Did I even need to pull these levers? I don't think so. Right? Did I just fuck up this whole thing? I did. Oh, man. It's another reason that people skip this, right? Right, they skip it because if you start effing with the levers, it, it like ruins it. And I wasn't supposed to touch these levers yet. I completely forgot. All right, I think I have them set correctly. There it is, okay. Okay, how fast can I push her? Almost. Is she there? She's there. Great. There we go. Right now, I touch the levers. They always do those levers, but these levers out here are only the second time. And we want to see the beam over us. There it is. So that's good. Yeah, so I was saying that I don't think um, haste works like it used to. I never feel like it makes me run any faster. It could be because I'm always running super fast anyway. But I remember back in the day when you cast haste on yourself, it used to make you go like twice as fast. Now, what's it do? Quicker, 15% faster than normal. And it does not stack with striding. Yeah. I think it should. Oh, I got to do the puzzle.
It's a bunch of lag. Like I'm, I'm clicking these, uh, and they're not spinning. So. I took 30 fire damage from that trap. So not super lethal. You guys do the new quest. Uh, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? The new Halloween quests I'm asking about. Where you go into the store. Shop till you drop. Is that what it's called or something like that? Not done it yet. I'd be curious to know what you thought about it. I, I I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all, actually. Which is, it's you know, could just be me. But I, I feel like they missed, um, they missed the whole idea of like, you know, the event. It just wasn't something that I'd want to do more than once. Which, for this event, like, the quests are sort of mindless. You need to farm through them really quick. So I probably would only do it once for the initial XP and then never do it again. I actually missed the quest that it replaced. The coal chamber one, where you drop down and you go all the way to the end and fight the hag. Like, I liked that quest. A lot of people didn't because it was long. But... I used to like it because it was thematically appropriate. Like, in other words, I thought it was cool to do for Halloween. Um, this one technically is thematic. You go into, like, a store where they... This one here, Shop to Drop. Where they, like, sell stuff. And the person who sells it is... You know, they need your help with something. But it's... And then the mo other most frustrating thing is, you know, like, I thought I did everything in the quest, and then it turns out I missed a star somewhere, and I don't know where, or how, or why. So, like, it's super frustrating, because it's not like I just went in there for a minute. I was in that quest for, like, 20 minutes. Like, it's, this is what I'm saying. It says short. That's bullshit. There's a lot of different things going on, even though it's a tiny little shop. <laughs> so, I mean, it's... I guess once you do it like a bunch of times, it's no big deal, right? But my initial blind playthrough of it, I just it didn't think it was that fun. It was overly complicated. And I'm like, yeah, I probably will not do this again just because if I want to farm materials to get gear, it's way easier for me to do something else. If you look at the complexity of this, which is super quick... This is listed as a short quest. And the amount of almonds that you can make in there versus this this here, I think it's also almonds. There's another thing too, is there's no reason why we need another short almond quest. We already have a really good short almond quest, which is that one over there. This should have been like a long, really weird quest that you do once, but it was long. The fact that it's short and weird, it just, it wasn't, I didn't think it was fun. So, I mean, I'll do it. I'll probably go in there and do try to get my last star and see what I missed. But it's not like I left the quest feeling. You know how I'll, I'll describe exactly how I felt. The first time, do you, you guys do this Smashing Pumpkin? The first time I did Smashing Pumpkin, I kind of felt exactly the same way. Like, yeah, it's interesting. And actually, this quest is better. Which, if that gives you an indicator, I usually only do Smashing Pumpkins once. I won't, I don't usually run it more than once because to get apples, way better to do this quest. So I do this once. It's, it's sort of like a chore and then I don't do it again, but it's okay. I feel the same exact way about that quest right there. It's like, I, I have no desire to do that again. I probably will, but I have no desire to. And the sort of the same thing with this one. 
this kobold's ringleader like i kind of missed the other quest that this one replaced um we the haberdasher quest like where you go down and you that that one was way better and way faster this one's too slow so it's not like it's any it's a challenge it's just too slow like if i'm gonna do a quest that's slower i'm gonna do this one because this one is like it gives you a lot more cinnamon for the fact that it's a little bit longer of a, of a quest and i remember when the liches at the end were super hard to kill and now they're super easy to kill they used to be such a pain Wow, three spells later and that dude's not dead. He got lucky. Now, every time I see a mummy lord, I think of the Baldur's Gate mummy lord. That I love that character. I forget his name. Um, but I do, I, every time I play Baldur's Gate, I do all his quests. It's, it's really cool. He's got a good voice actor. I think it's Mystic Carrion. I think that's his name. It's cool. I just phased myself out for no reason and now I can't do any damage. God, I hate wild magic. I hate it. I'm dancing. So how fast do we do that? 30,000 XP for a minute 50. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So the t-shirt that I'm wearing, if you guys can see. Does anybody know who that is? It's a video game character. Before I tell you. The only way you'd know this characters if you played BioWare's Mass Effect. Right, this came from the Mass Effect store. Pro this was prior to them releasing Andromeda, which was god-awful. I think probably their worst game ever. And, um, you know, they killed the franchise basically by making garbage, but um, this is from the one to three. So I think I got the short when three came out. So the it's Tally, who I married in game. And then when I saw the t-shirt on the store, I'm like, yeah, definitely. I will buy a, a t-shirt with my wife on it. I, met, I married Tally, who's a quarian. Basically they, um, they live on this like flotilla of ships. Uh, their story is really interesting. They invented, uh, like a AI, a ver uh, you know, they had it like an AI revolution and their robots became sentient. And then basically they got in a war with their robots. The robots drove them all off their planet. And so then they escaped on this giant flotilla, kind of like Battlestar Galactica. Where there were just of like two or three hundred ships in a giant fleet uh, floating through the galaxy because they had no more homeworld. 
the the Gek, the robot that the robots that took over their home planet, they basically like closed the system down and wouldn't let let anybody near it. So the decades of being stuck on these flotilla ships had like blown away the Quarian immune systems, so they couldn't survive basically without these special suits. They wore like um you know, you can see her like the cap on her suit. It's like a self-contained bio unit. And um, that's how they all lived. And so I didn't get to see her face until the end of the game. It was super cool. It's, a, it's such a great, great series of games. Really amazing, like uh, storytelling, cinematic storytelling, similar to what they did in, in um, Baldur's Gate. Larian really did a great job sort of picking up the mantle where EA left off prior to uh, Bioware left off prior to EA killing them, I should say. So, really cool. It was one of the things for Larian Studios they added in eventually at the end. If you beat Baldur's Gate 3 and you do what's called a heroic ending, you actually get to have a party with all the people in your in your group and then whatever relationships you have going like you get to see what happens with them so you know if you marry one of the characters or if you go off with them you get to follow up with them and see how how it's going so it's pretty cool The normal canon ending that I do for Baldur's Gate is where I marry Shadowheart at the end. And then uh, she ends up like wanting to have like a like an animal farm because she likes animals, so we end up getting the um, the owl bear to come and live with us. But there's like 25,000 different endings to that game, so. I've done one ending where I went to Avernus with Carlac and, like, helped her. And it was great because at the party at the end, they added dialogue with her where she talks about how in Avernus she found, like, a workshop where they originally made her like heart and she thinks that if she goes there she'll be able to find like an actual cure so that's really cool if they ever decided to do like a dlc for that game or like a part two or if larian completely abandons it like they say they are never going to make another update for it they released their tool toolkits publicly so the player base now has all the same development tools that larian themselves used to make the game so technically a group of uh, motivated individuals could make like an expansion for it and i have a feeling that's exactly what people would do they'd probably make because it makes the most sense they probably make a quest that goes to avernus and the the way we have tech right now like where we're positioned with technology people could absolutely use ai to clone for an expansion like for a player made expansion they could certainly clone like all of the voices to do you know um as it w probably wouldn't sound like 100 percent, but it would be really close people are already doing stuff like that like the, i saw somebody did an update for baldur's gate where they made gale into a chef so he's just like a um like a crazy weird chef i thought that was super funny there was another mod somebody made with gail where they made him it's not magic that he needs he has like really bad allergies and you have to get him antihistamines and he has these allergy attacks it's super super funny so my hope is like in a year or two it's going to be like uh skyrim Basically, like, uh, Baldur's Gate's going to be, like, the new Skyrim where the modding community just goes crazy. Or, like, Fallout 4 is another really good example uh, where people are just using the tools to make full expansions. Like, Fallout 4 New London 
it was a completely player based made like expansion that they had um like a patreon for and i saw the i did a video on my channel about it it's huge so if you like fallout 4 that's definitely worth checking out if you didn't know about it um because why is bethesda not making any more fallout content i don't know who knows they decided to make Starfield, which was garbage, and then make an expansion for Starfield, which is even more garbage. I bought it. I didn't like it. Oh, this is probably going to kill me. Oh, it didn't. Okay, I forgot. I'm not in Reaper. Yeah, when you get that thundercloud over your head from the wild magic, if you're in Reaper, it can actually, like, one-shot you. I've had it happen to me a couple of times when I was doing R6 solo i got that it does like four thousand lightning damage when that lightning strike hits you all right i'm gonna see if i can just tank this explosion yeah it wasn't bad it's like 300 damage It may have done more, because I think I'm running... Yeah, I had 120 electric, so it did a little bit more than the damage that I actually took, but... I don't think it does more than 500 damage, so if you had over 500 hit points, I think you could stand there and tank it. But I might be wrong. We have 184. We need 240 of each mat, though, right? Like, we're getting closer. So my elixir ran out. I'm going to use another one. There's that. Okay, so. And then let's just double check. I think it's 240 of each. And that's for the horse. Has anybody used the ghostly glamour? Is it cool? I haven't seen it. Um, Violet. Is Violet the new color? Violet Defender of the Harvest. Cosmetic Violet Hunter Hat. And Violet cloak of autumn feathers i want to say that i've seen all that stuff but i just don't remember if i got that stuff or not i think i did i think i unlocked this stuff red steed do i have the red steed is a question there's the blue steed There's the red steed. Okay, so the only one that I don't have is the green one. I have the little pseudo dragon. Right there. Okay. I don't buy the candy anymore because this is candy is garbage. They ruined it. 40 seconds should be 40 minutes. Um, I have the regular horse. I have all the regular armor. I have the broom. So I have to check my cosmetic tune just to make sure that I have this stuff. I'm, I'm almost positive I do because I remember the... Yeah, I remember the cloak. The, auto, the autumnal feather cloak. Uh, I think this is the only new thing along with this. Like, I don't... Ghostly Leaves Glamoured Weapon Aura. Is it going to be any cooler than my... My twirly... Lightsaber effect that I have on my spyglass? I did the spyglass like that because it kind of looks like... Something out of Star Wars, right? Like it looks, it looks weird. 
But I don't think that the whatever that glamour is from this would look as cool. Maybe I'll get one. It's cheap, right? Like, it's super cheap. So maybe I'll just grab one just to have it. It will not glamour a bow, though. That's interesting. I thought the glamours worked on bows. They need a sweep emote for the broom, basically. There's a lot of people here. There's two instances. Uh, how many keys do I have? I still have 16 keys. I used to used to do all this stuff, melt it all down in, in crafting mats, but I capped my crafter. So now I have my crafter at 400, so I don't really need to melt this stuff down anymore, so I just sell it. Even on this character, I have my crafting at 250 but it's 250 because i did a video on like how to get your crafting up really quickly in one go like this is all from just doing it once uh with a with i think i had like 10,000 essences to do that i think i might have been 20,000 essences i'll eventually do another video for it probably on the new server since i'll have a new um a new character that'll have zero we'll make another guide for it for 2025 Not much. God, I'm not one-shotting these mobs. That is scary. And that was quite some lag, right? All right, so one of the zombies just ran off into the middle of nowhere for, for who knows why. Did he go to get his friends? Is his sim returning with his buddy? I think so. But there's another one. I don't know. Let's see if I can one-shot that group. Ah, oh, it looks like I got him. We'll try this one. Nope. So we're kind of right at that level. You know what I'd like to see? Am I... Let's add Maximize to that. See if maybe we can guarantee a one-shot. Right, what's the difference in our mana consumption? Right now, that costs 73 spell points. If I turn that off, what does it cost? still costs 73 so yeah i think i have them all turned on on another page 
I do. Okay, so they're already maximized, heightened, and empowered. The only thing we're missing here is intensify. So we'll drag it there and turn it on. And the reason I can be so crazy with my mana is I'm running with evergreen, which should allow me to still not need a shrine. But we'll see if all of a sudden I start needing a shrine. But hopefully that makes it so that I one-shot those groups faster. We still have 75%. So I should be able to kill this whole group right here with one hit. So I missed one. We should be able to get that group. Nope, we're still not doing like full-on one-shot. That's lame. We are really close to getting that whole group. All right, and we want five when we hit this right here. Four when we hit these. Then three. We're still not getting a one hit. Okay, two. Oh, that was good. And then one, if I can jump him over the corner here. Yeah, we got it. Okay. If everything goes well, every single group is one-shotted by one fireball. But it's hard to get into that groove. And if everything goes well, I just nuke that... Um, Lich before I even see him, but for some reason he didn't take a lot of damage from my initial sunburst. This event works well if you have friends. You can do it together. One thing I noticed, though, if you do it with other people, is that you have to have, like, everyone has to kind of contribute damage. Because if somebody just hangs out at the door and doesn't do any damage, they don't really get any keys. It's not so much the case for doing the other stuff, but if you're key farming specifically, I found that it's better... Because, like, I have an alt account whenever I've done the alt account and just parked it at the front door. It usually doesn't get a lot of keys. And I think it's because it's not doing any of the damage. But let's see how fast we can do this almond quest. Like, we should be able... Like, a good time for this almond quest is 45 seconds. Right? Like, that's a, that's a good run. If you can do this quest in 45 seconds then you're doing really well. I'm not sure if the time starts like after you talk to that person. But for some reason I missed all them. All right, now I got to nuke this dude. See if I can kill him quickly. Will it be 45 seconds quick? Probably not. That was slow and sloppy. Ah, oh, 50 seconds. We got close. 45 seconds. You're only 5 seconds off. Can get it even better than that. That just says to me, because of how slow I went, you could probably get that quest to do it in like 35 seconds if you're really, really good. It's one of basically one shot everything, right? But still, how much XP do we get for 50 seconds? Like almost 30,000 experience. Like you can't get any better XP in the game.
Like, it's the best XP in the game, minute for minute. The only problem, though, is that it gets a little boring doing that. And I don't know if the timer starts like as soon as you're in here or if it's when you start talking to that dude, but. And it helps like if you have the wings because then you could just sip through. So we're already off like to a bad start because of that zombie it took an hour to kill. Another thing that sucks is Suborn didn't come up. So that's another thing that's going to slow us down. Because now I have to go chase him. So if he came up by himself and just died, but... He's sort of acting weird, just standing there. So I have a feeling we're already in over a minute. Yeah, minute and four seconds. So we did that significantly slower than the last one. And part of it is you can never tell when Vorn is going to bug out. Like, sometimes he just bugs out. Another thing that will happen is sometimes talking to Max there will bug out completely and you won't get credit for this quest at all. So then you end up wasting the entire thing. Sorry if you guys hear that loud uh, noise. That's a train. Where I live, uh, there is a train that like goes on the island. Makes a lot of noise. It's cool though that they have a train that comes like all the way out here. Because where I live, is an, it's on an uh, actual island. So... Um, you wouldn't think that they'd run a train out to it, so it's cool that they did. There is a bridge, though. If they close the train bridge and they close the, the car bridge, then there's no way to get off the island. Unless you have a boat. But people always make jokes about that. Oh, you're in Massachusetts? That's great. Yeah, I am in the Cape, actually. Yep. Um, it's one of those things, like, they make jokes. Like, if you never leave, you know, if you don't leave the island, they'll joke around with you about it. I don't think there's a I'm missing anything. I think it's great. Like, when I was younger, I used to want to go all over, but now I don't really care. I realized that, um, you know, it's, it's all the same everywhere. There are some nice places to visit, though, right? But living in New England, if you live in New England too, like you know, it's we've got a really pretty environment here, especially this time of year. Really cool foliage and stuff like that. Uh, the ocean looks beautiful now. The sky looks beautiful. 
And where I live, because it's an island, um, we're able to see sun, uh, west facing sunsets. So. Pretty cool. That all five? That's all five. Yeah, Massachusetts is cool. What part of Mass are you from? You don't have to tell me exactly where you're from, but, like, give me a gist. North? North Shore? South Shore? Uh, out in the... What is it, the West? Oh, near Framingham. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So you've probably been to the Worcester Centrum. Oh, you grew up in Dennis. That's cool. Yeah, that's nice. It's great. Dennis is pretty, right? It's part of the Cape. Framingham. That's nice. When I was in college, I went out with a girl from Framingham. And he used to think it was such a pain to get her to her house <laughs> when I would drive. But in college, my car was a junk box, so I didn't really want to, to drive. Don't, don't you have to go on the mass pike to get to Framingham? I might be wrong. I forget. It's been a while. You don't have to tell me, though, but I'm just talking out loud. I try to avoid the mass pike. I try to avoid... Uh, 128 like I try to avoid all those crazy places where there's a lot of traffic like Storo Drive God <laughs> I used to drive there all the time. I used to work in downtown Boston. So You know some days I w most days I took the train in I got like a trolley pass and just You know rode around on the trains all day, but some days I would drive into work and park it was such a nightmare I don't miss that at all Not at all like, yeah, sit me on an island. I don't care what they say. It's way better than sitting in traffic for four hours a day just to go in and out of Boston. Boston's a beautiful city, but I think that they should make it so that no cars can go into the city at all. I think what, what they should do is, like, on the outskirts, they have big parking lots underground, kind of like in East Boston and Winthrop and all around the city. You park, and then you either have to, like take the train in or like once people like Elon Musk get the robot taxis up and running you just jump in like a robotic conveyance and this it takes you into the city so they can get rid of all the cars they have some really beautiful old cobblestone streets and stuff but one of the things that's super frustrating about Boston is that it's a small city so with all the cars it just gets really like it feels really small with all the cars there. It'd be so much cooler if you could just walk around with no cars. So you can, if you go to Boston Common, right? Like, that's cool. I went to college in Boston too. Boston, Cambridge. So, spent a lot of time in the city when I was younger. If you're from this area, I used to work at um, a nightclub called Axis. I don't know if you've ever gone out in the city. This is going back, though. It's not there anymore. But years ago, Avalon, Axis used to be on Lansdowne Street. Uh, I worked at them for years, years and years. Back when Lansdowne Street had Mama Ken on it, uh, the club that was owned by Aerosmith. Um, you know, I used to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, and I also was working corporate at the time in Boston. So I was in the city a lot. This was back when we had WNFNX, though. Uh, when we used to have the Phoenix, if you remember that. We used to have BCN. If 
But the club I worked at, Axis, used to do X Night for WFNX. They used to broadcast live from the nightclub. Used to be so cool. It was like the place to be. It was great. It's a great time. Late 90s, early 2000s in Boston. Which is like, what, a thousand years ago now, but... And I got to see an awful lot of bands, too, by working on Lansdowne Street at those clubs, because we used to get... Not, I saw Aerosmith when they were there. They were... Because, you know, they owned Mama Kin. I saw them. They actually played Mama Kin in, you know, like the downstairs. And I got to see them. I didn't realize it was them. I went to see a band called the Cheese Spots. And they came out with, like, paper mache like stuff on their heads and then like through the show they took them off and it turned out to be like Aerosmith uh they were really good live like really really good but I got to see an awful lot of like people like singing and uh a whole bunch because they used to do like musical things up and down that street all year they would have guest singers and then what would happen is like the singers would go on in Avalon, but they would use the access as their like green room where they'd get ready and hang out. So like I actually get to meet a lot of them as well. A lot of them are completely batshit crazy and drunk or high or stuff, but a lot of them are nice. There was a band, I'm trying to remember the name of this band that came out. They were like really popular in the 90s. The lead singer, I met him. He was just like completely insane. Um, I want to say their name is like Shinebox. I could be wrong though. God, I'm going to have to do the researching and find out what the name of this band was. They had some really... Uh, good music back then though but I think they vanished I don't think they're around anymore I wouldn't be surprised if that lead singer was dead like the way he, he was just completely blasted But it was from doing that, like, I discovered bands like the Pixies, who I love. Like, they, you know, got to see and hear a lot of really good music. Um, I want to say that there's a band that's local to Boston that I don't know if they ever made it national, but I think their name was Machinery Hall. I think they played a couple of times. They used to be really good. I don't think they're around anymore, though. But again, this is going back, like, millions of years back to the early 2000s which it's hard to believe that was over 20 years ago but it's completely different now though all the clubs are different they're all like they destroyed half of them the other half were repurposed and made into something else like Avalon no longer exists Axis no longer exists I think Mamakin was was turned into something completely different um, I think the only thing that's still there is the there's the bar where you could play pool. I forget the name of it. Um, all that stuff, of course, is right next to Fenway Park. Fenway Park is still there and still awesome. And highly recommend if you visit Boston to go to Fenway Park. Very, very cool. Where else can you play thirty pay thirty dollars for a hot dog? Right? Like, but it's good. It's nostalgia. Like, you're seeing a hundred years worth of history or whatever it is. And you can see the green monster. Oh, Jillian's. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you know. 
Bro, I used to play pool at Jillian's all the time. I would go there, like, let's say I had to work that night. Uh, I'd go there early, meet meet people that I work with, play pool, or like on our day off, if we were we were in town, go over to Jillian's to play pool. Yeah, I used to go there all the time. Oh, BU. Yeah, BU. That's great. That's right there. Yeah, I went to Emerson, and I used to have friends at BU, because BU also did, like, things that would involve them with, like, film and film art. And I used to get my my 16 millimeter film developed at BU. They had the, um, for some reason, they had the ability to do, to develop the film where Emerson didn't, we had to outsource it. So I used to take the train green line and go over to BU. And I was friends with other students who were there. The music school too. A lot of people who like were learning how to score. We would work with as, cause I went to film school, we would score with people. It was interesting. It was really cool. I miss FNX and BCN. I miss the Phoenix. Like I miss all that stuff. I felt I felt like it made Boston a better place. I don't know why they got rid of it. We still have CRB, which is the classical station for Boston, but I mean, even that like changed its number. It used to be on a different, I think it's just because it got so hard to have a radio station because the internet, right? Like they don't make a lot of money now. I actually worked as a producer um, on, I forget the channel. I think it might've been like Kiss 108 or something like that, um, but the work that I did as a producer, like, could have wound up on any radio station because I was doing work for, at, like, advertising, radio advertisements, which are really usually very simple. Now, it's like I put more effort into making YouTube videos than I think they put into a, to commercials that make it on the radio. Like, it's usually, like, not all, obviously. I'm just, like, saying generally, but... I know some of them went on to the um, ERS, which is the Emerson College Radio, or whatever whatever the actual name is. I might be saying that wrong. It's It's been a while. This tiny lag, like in each click that I try to make, it it like fights me and doesn't want to turn. Oop! Didn't need to that one. So you 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 guys know Massachusetts, you know Boston. Have you guys ever eaten at Kelly's roast beef on Revere Beach? W A A F, yeah, that's gone too. I forgot about AAF. Yeah, they AAF used to do what like hard rock. BCN was like a mix of like um of like grunge and hard rock and then FNX was like punk, like uh all the alternative experimental music.
And I used to work on Lansdowne Street. I had my pass, my badge, that would get me into any of the clubs. But I used to love using it to go over to Cambridge, where I also spent a lot of time, and go to... Um, God, I'm going to forget off the top of my head what the name of that club was, but... Uh, let's see if I can remember it. Um, it's called Man Ray. Club Man Ray over in Cambridge we used to go there, which used to have like alternative and used to be really weird. Like they used to have fetish nights and stuff like that. We didn't really have that on Lansdowne Street, but I used to get a kick out of it. The most dangerous night for us was Thursday night where they would have like, um, it would be like hip hop night. And for some reason it was the most dangerous. In other words, like we'd have the most people on drugs, um, in the, you know, like trying to have sex in the bathrooms. Like it was just Thursdays for some reason was just insane. Uh, Friday was good that they did F and X. It was like the techno music. So we had a lot of really like serious dancers who would come in and then Saturday was where they did like um, BCN kind of alternative rock and roll. And that used to be like a really sort of like a like that movie old school kind of had the same vibe as Saturday night. It was cool. They used to do all the concerts on Saturday, usually. Uh, let's check. All right, 230. We're really close on that, that, that. We still need almonds. Those are easy. And caramel is probably the last one I'm going to get. So we might as well finish this stupid dragon. Get these done. Why it's such a great idea to sell these, right? Like, because it's such a pain to do this dragon quest. It's a big W that they made that back to normal where you can actually sell it. That's great. It's good news. So, if you're trying to build an economy in this game, it's a great way to make Astral Shard. Selling those. Selling all of these mats is a really good thing, but specifically those dragon scales. Yeah, the wild magic just turned me into a rat. So, I asked you guys if you had ever had Kelly's Roast Beef on Revere Beach. Uh, they have more than one Kelly's now. It used to be originally it was just on the beach where they... Um, they're world famous. I mean, they say they are, but I think they actually are because I think they may be, and you guys obviously could fact just check this, but I think that they were the first people to serve roast beef warm. I think most um, places, delis and stuff, served roast beef sandwiches like sliced cold. And I think for some reason, I don't know why, they they served it sliced hot. So, uh, you know, as a source as a source of lore, it's really interesting. The food is really good if you like, you know, that kind of fast food, beach food, that kind of stuff. And then as a as another point of lore, it was my first job ever. I got that job. I think I was like 16 years old when I first worked there in the summer. Um, I don't know. Like, I was only part time. I, I think it was only weekends, and like I was helping out, but. I remember making tips working on the window and I was so excited that I made a lot of tips. And then like I was, I got really upset because they made me pull the tips and then they all shared them. And I was a kid, right? So they took all the tips and then they bought like beer with it. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, a, I can't drink. I'm a kid. So I didn't get to keep my tips because they pulled it all and bought like a beer ball or something like that and went to some party years later you know like when i worked for tips and stuff i made sure that i got to keep mine but that first year like yeah they used to they used to take my tips all the time and back then this is a long time it used to be a fish plate and a coke for a dollar 99. so 
If you were wondering how old I am. Yeah, I'm like fucking ancient. I think I might be a thousand. Go back. Where could you get anything for $1.99 nowadays? I don't think you can unless you go to Costco. You can still get the hot dog and a Coke for $1.99. But that's because Costco has specifically set that price. They don't want to raise the price. I think if you got a fish plate and a Coke at Kelly's now, it would be 20 bucks. Something like that. And there's another, what is the, uh, what's another, like, iconic restaurant that you guys think anybody who comes to Boston should go to? What do you guys think? I'm trying to think of another one other than Kelly's. I definitely think if you came to Massachusetts, it's worth a trip out to Revere Beach to go there. Like I said, the food isn't, like, going to change your life, but it is really good, like, fast beach food. Um... And I think that they do a really good job with that sort of, you know, their fish and their roast beef. It's good. If you like that kind of stuff. Mike's Pastry in the North End. Yeah. So it's interesting that you, you say that because when we used to work at the nightclubs, we would always go to the North End after the clubs were closed, into, you know, like two in the morning. And I think we actually used to go there. I, I'm not sure if it was Mike's, but we used to go there for coffee and pastry, so I'm pretty sure it, it might be. It's been a long time since I had to think about the name, but... It used to be packed, too. From like 2 to 5 in the morning, it would be packed with people. The same thing with Kelly's. People would leave... Uh, Lansdowne at 2 in the morning and then drive to Riviera Beach and then go and eat Kelly's and people would be out there 2, 3, 4 in the morning I think I have to do, what, the puzzle? I might have, what, one more lever. Okay, one more lever. There used to be a couple of pizza places on Revere Beach, too, that were really popular destinations. So you'd go to the beach and people would eat at Kelly's. But if you didn't want to eat at Kelly's, you could go to Bianchi's Pizza. And they used to have really good, thin, very, very thin pizza. Uh, I used to love eating that pizza. I used to go there and get a pizza for lunch. And just eat it all by myself. I don't think I could eat an entire pizza now, but I, yeah, I used to. And then another place we used to have in Revere growing up when I was young was this um, Chinese restaurant called August Moon where everybody would go at the end at the, when everybody was done like working and stuff people would go there and get drunk so I didn't go there a lot uh, for the food but when I was younger people used to go there all the time to like drink these crazy concoctions that they would have I mean this is going back very far but I don't think any of that's there anymore. Oh, Kowloon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Kowloon is one of them. Yeah, Kowloon is the same idea as August Moon. Uh, very similar, too. They looked almost identical. Like, Kowloon was a little bigger. Uh, Kowloon became more popular, though, because they were on the highway and they did a comedy night. So, like, they'd get a lot of comedians that would go in there, aside from people, like, drinking and weddings and things like that. And the food was, was decent. It was pretty good. I've been to Kowloon's in my life probably, like, 500 times. Like, I've been there a lot. Um, it was pretty good. So I'll have to check that out if they're going to do that. Gianni's Pizza in Knobscott. I've never had that. Um, oh, yeah, my auto mod caught something. Hold on, I'm going to allow it. Yeah, because it, it didn't know what words you were saying, but... Kowloon. The restaurant. It was like... Polynesian, Chinese, and some other type Japanese food. I think they added Japanese later, because you could, you could get sushi there. There was one that they built up... I forget the name of it on the hill it was a massive massive restaurant on the top of this hill and um it was really good for the time while it was there but then it like tanked hard i don't know what happened something very like sketch happened that this massive restaurant went out of business and then it sat there unused for a long time like a decade or two uh just as sort of like a like a post-apocalyptic wasteland I mean, we're not talking, we're talking like a castle sized restaurant on a hill that overlooked a major highway. Like it used to be really popular to go there. And then all of a sudden it just completely died. I'm sure there's a story for that too. I don't even want to speculate on it because there's pro who the, who the hell can say why that thing vanished, but I'm sure somebody knows. And this is going back in time too. It's not like this happened recently. This is at least 20 years ago, which I guess from my perspective um, is like a, a million years ago, right? It's like people, you know, how, how long people don't even remember what they did like three days ago, let alone, you know, 20 years. But at one time, it's nice to see that the Kowloon is still there, right? We, had, we used to have a restaurant that was in Boston, but they also put one down near the beach where I used to live. That was called Billy C's, which was really good, like Asian, pan-Asian food. I used to go in there all the time and get stuff like rice and sushi and stuff like that. And when I worked in Boston, I used to go to a Vietnamese soup kitchen a lot. And I used to eat soup a lot because I really liked that Vietnamese soup with the noodles. I used to think it was great. So I used to go there a lot. I used to go eat lunch a lot in Chinatown, too, which was really cool. Um, forget the name like what they used to call it the eatery i think it was called which was like a floor of all these different restaurants but you had to like walk over crack addicts and people who were like od'd on like methadone in order to get into the eatery so it wasn't something that i did all the time because you kind of had to like put on your brave face because you were going to walk into like a neighborhood that was you know filled with things that weren't necessarily normal but the food was really good. The food was great. I stopped going there, though. I had, a, I had two incidents, aside from the crack addicts that you had to walk over. One was that I was sitting at a table eating with, like, coworkers, and, like, I felt something, like, on my foot, and I looked down, and there was, like, a very decent-sized rat, like, just poking around. You know, those rodents don't usually bother me, but... 
I was just like, well, that's probably not cool since we're so close to the food, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I didn't didn't uh, tell anybody at the table initially either. And then one of the women I was sitting with at the table saw it and screamed and it turned into this huge thing, which I thought was kind of amusing. Uh, and then the next time we were eating, this was like maybe months later, uh, I so I put my plate on the table and like I went to the station to get some napkins and some like whatever chopsticks or whatever and when i turned around i saw something drop from the ceiling onto my plate and it turned out it was like a giant cockroach that just fell into my food so then after that i was just like you know the crack addicts for one thing the rat was another thing but bugs falling in my food i'm probably not going to come back here because i felt like okay i just saw that but i bet that happens all the time behind the scenes and they just don't tell you and they put pick the bug out and just give you the food anyway and you just eat it not that it's bad not that it's bad but objectively that's you know not what i wanted for lunch working so i know people eat bugs but i don't think they eat cockroaches and it really like it it disgusted me at the time i was like get me out of here There was one homeless guy, though, who used to hang out in front of where the crack addicts would be. And um, he used to be able to, like, recite poetry just off the top of his head. It was so cool. I, I, don't, I, want, I never asked him. I wanted to ask, like, do you spend, like, your entire evening committing these to memory? Or when did you learn all these? Because you could pay him. He could just recite to you. And if you knew a poem, I mean, it, obviously it was, like well-known stuff like Robert Frost and and Dylan and stuff like that but um, yeah I used to give that guy money to recite me a poem whenever I went there if he was there a lot of really interesting people would show up in Boston outside like that we used to have there used to be when I would get off the green line I forget what stop it was, but they used to be like a Catwoman. And I don't mean like the Batman villain, a Catwoman. I mean like a cat girl. And not like what you see on the internet either. This is like a woman who just used to dress up like a cat and just sit there. Kind of like a cat would. She wouldn't say anything to you. Would just kind of blink at you. <laughs> I took a picture of her. I bet I have the picture. Still, but I, I would have to find it. But I've never actually said anything to her because I'm like, what? She, she's probably just gonna meow at me, right? Like, probably. I used to get such a kick out of the fact that she would be there. It wasn't just like a one off where she was just there one day. Any given day, she could have been the sitting there. We get a lot of that in Salem, Massachusetts, too. Salem, there's a lot of, like, very interesting people who will do stuff like that. I definitely recommend doing a trip like that if you've never been to Massachusetts to go to Salem for Halloween. Although, you gotta plan it around being, you know, inundated with, like, lots and lots of people. Because Salem gets really busy this time of year. But it is cool. It's definitely a cool place to see if you haven't before because even though like Salem tries to be a maritime business ta port town where they have very modern restaurants and and um, you know like businesses and stuff it still really is like which city you know like they have a lot of people here who are Wiccans and, and things like that. So Halloween is always super fun. You can go to a vampire's ball. You can go to a witch's ball. Uh, you can go on a, a tour on a tour of a graveyard. Uh, you, I think they even have like where they go through and, and you see like places HP Lovecraft wrote about, like they do all sorts of cool stuff. You can, I went on like, there's a tall ship, parked in Salem Harbor I think at least there used to be 
and um i actually went on it and what the they had like a bunch of kids who were who were running like a event on that ship where they would read ghost stories in the in the lower decks it was pretty cool I used to dress up for Halloween every single year. As a matter of fact, I used to cosplay all year long in in different costumes, but this was before it was called cosplay. So I've, I'm like 20 or 30 years too early. Used to get a kick out of it. Uh, but back on Lansdowne Street to... to that that was completely normal like people like that kind of stuff there last time i was in boston though i got really kind of upset it just didn't feel the same hey, it still looks good fenway's the reason i went there was fenway park um fenway's still really cool it's just everything else was kind of different and my college is still there so that's good. I feel like I missed one of those. I don't think I did, though. Right? It's right down here. Yeah, I did not miss one. I've been trying to think of a roast beef place that is also like well known, not Kelly's. I can't think of it, but it's it's really really like famous around that area. I want to say it's like Bill's roast beef or something like that. You guys ever hear that? Or am I miss I might be misremembering. I think that's what it is though. No. All right, light. Yeah, that'll kill him. I'm glad he took double damage from that. I don't do this one a lot because it's not super fast. We're getting close. Only six more. Five and a half more levels. And then I can get out of this 
Crazy wild magic, finally. Nick's roast beef in Beverly. Yeah, I believe I've had that. I've been to Beverly in my life a lot. Another thing we have, I don't know if it's everywhere now, but legal seafood, right? I remember when legal seafood was like just one restaurant and um, people used to talk about how great the chowder was there and the fish and stuff. So now I think there's a whole bunch of restaurants. They might even be national now, but I remember back in the day when they were just like one place. Um, I know they sell them now, like you can go, if you go to Fenway, you can get like legal food there. But I always thought that they were really good. I used to go when I was like in between, like right after I got out of college, family that would come here. We That's where we do like holiday dinners because they did a pretty good job. If you didn't want to cook, you could order the food from them. It was good. Try, I'm still trying to remember the name of that band with that crazy singer. Was it Silver Chair? Was that a band from like the late 90s, early 2000s? Gonna have to take a pause and Google that, that name and see if I'm remembering that correctly. I'm probably wrong. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. That is a band. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I met all those guys. It started in 1992. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm almost positive that was them. Yeah, like I said, they were they were really crazy people. I think one of the best, where was the first legal? I, you know, I don't know. I thought it was in downtown somewhere. I forget though. My first introduction to it was when I um, was a kid, right? Like younger, I forget the year it started. I have realized the older I get, the easier it is for me to misremember stuff. I'll give you guys a great example of what I'm talking about. Like, I remember when I was young, when I was a kid, I don't remember what year it came out. I was, I would have wagered money that Patrick Stewart, you know, the guy from Star Trek, the bald guy from Star Trek, I would have wagered money that Patrick Stewart was voted like sexiest man of the year on a people magazine cover or whatever magazine does the sexiest man of the year cover i my memory that's what i see but that's not what what it was that he never was on the cover of that magazine it was like a different magazine maybe like a star trek fan magazine where he was somebody said something about it and I think at the time when i was young i had saw a people magazine cover and that at the same time and like my mind mashed them together. So for a long time, I carried that memory around thinking Patrick Stewart had been voted Sexiest Man of the Year, always wondering like, are people crazy? Why would they vote him that? But it turns out it wasn't even true. I 
I do really like him, though. I have a version of him reading, um, the, um, the Christmas story there, Christmas Carol. Which I think he actually went on to make, like, I, I'm pretty sure I own that, too. Like, he, he starred in a version where he played Scrooge. So, pretty good stuff. Yeah, it could have been. You you might be right, because I think Patrick Swayze actually did wind up on a People magazine cover for Sexiest Guy, right? And then Patrick Stewart. So when I was a kid, I could have easily just, like, saw both of them and just made that memory up. But that's something, the only reason I mention that is because I know, like, there are things that I just completely m misremember. I, I might think something is... Is, is, you know, set in stone, but then I, like, oh, actually, that's not the case. I'm just misremembering it. So, I'm not quite sure the first time I had uh, legal food, legal seafood, but it's always been good, and it's consistently been good every time I've had it, even up to recently when I've had it, so... It's kind of like the Costco hot dogs, right? Like, it sounds weird to say, but if you want a good hot dog, Costco has, like, a, a deal. You get a hot dog and a Coke for $1.99. I've already... I don't know why I've said that twice tonight, but... It's just one of those weird things. It's true. It's good. I don't usually eat hot dogs either, so... I think they sell the same hot dogs, though, that you can get at Fenway. And those are pretty good. When I was younger, I had a roommate. And, uh, like, I'd come home, and I'd find him for dinner. He'd just be eating a box of raw hot dogs. And I'd be like, bro, why aren't you cooking those? And he's like, ah, just don't feel like it. And he would just eat them all. <laughs> He'd say I'd never done that. I used to cut them up and put them in my SpaghettiOs, but I would cook them. I didn't put them raw in the SpaghettiOs. I would, like, fry them up a little first. He used to just eat them. And looking back, that's probably, like, death amounts of sodium, right? Eating a... I, I don't know how many hot dogs come in a box. A 25? I don't know. Like, a lot, right? I mean... Crazy. You having have roommates, you always get to see some weird, weird stuff. In college, I had a roommate, and he used to have like um, I don't even know what it's called. But he used to be able to just fall asleep anywhere, at any time, with no warning. I don't think it was, like, medically dangerous, where, like, he wasn't able to drive a car, but it's like... The... Bro, he would just be sleeping. How can you sleep now, man? Like, it doesn't matter what's going on, it, he'd just be able to sleep. He... it was like a gift. I used to get jealous, because, you know, a lot of times in college... It was stressful, right? I used to have a, you know, I used to get really good grades and stuff like that, so, like, there's a lot of work and there's a lot of stress, but it was worth it, looking back, I'm, like, glad, but it was, uh, yeah, I'm just not the type of person who could just fall asleep anywhere, but he would just fall asleep anywhere. Super chill. It's like a superpower. Oh, get out of here. How did he survive that?
like some of them roll a 20 and like they just don't take any damage at all. I am going to miss my weaponized color spray though once I spec out of this. Nobody else can get it. You have to be you have to use wild magic in order to do damage with color spray. So I'm going to miss that. Thirty thousand. Am I close? Yeah, we're getting close. That took me eight and a half minutes. That is really, really slow for thirty thousand XP. So that's why that Cobalt quest at the beginning is so much better than all of these. Forty-five seconds to get thirty thousand XP is way better than eight minutes. We'll do it right now. We'll see. Maybe we can do it super fast. It depends if we get a, um, you know, like a lucky, a lucky pull. So we're going to blow away the first group with that spell so that they should all go. Yep. Then we'll do the second one with this and this. Okay. Got it. And the third one will hit them with a sunburst. Does that get them? Okay, that got him. And then we'll do another sunburst. Color spray. And then Arcane Tempest is up. Vorn came up. So we might actually be able to do this one fast. No, so Sarek is going slow. He's got resists or whatever. So sometimes he like it's really easy to kill him. And sometimes not that easy to kill him. 47, though. 47 seconds. So, we were almost there. Right? I think the best time I've ever seen in this quest is 30 seconds. Somewhere around 30. I might be misremembering that, but I think it's the 37 seconds was maybe my best time. You guys may um, have a good time of your own. I'm sure somewhere it exists, a list of like all the best times for those quests, what you should be hunting for. I think the key quest is what, like two and a half minutes, right? Like if you're on, if you're on point, you can do that key quest in like two and a half minutes. This quest, yeah, like I think for me personally, like for, if I can do this in 45 seconds, I feel like I'm doing it, doing it good, like hitting it correctly. But sometimes I get stuck on that NPC at the beginning, too, like... And that should have obliterated them all, but it didn't. That one missed. Alright, so I'm a little behind already. But if we can make it up on, on Sarek, if Vorn will come up here, we're gonna try to grab Vorn by, like, jumping around a little bit. Alright, we got him. I feel like we're slow, but we'll try. 43! A little better. 43 seconds. And what do you guys do? Anybody got it down to 30? It seems like if you're really, really tight, maybe... Maybe that's a little too much. Maybe 35. I don't know, though. You'd have to be one ki like one-shotting everything, like literally, and then you'd have to be like running, throwing, and then moving on really quick. And then also, like where I get snagged is at the beginning when I go over and talk to this dude. Sometimes when I click through, it doesn't click through. I think that adds a few seconds on it. Because I have to physically... Because I'm on an Xbox controller, right? So it doesn't always like click. Cool. Legal seafood by the aquarium. Yeah. You know, want to know an interesting story about the aquarium? 
So I'm going to forget the name of this animal. Um, I'm almost positive it was a sea lion. And we had a pregnant one here in Boston. For some reason, I happened to be there. Like I said, we would work at night when we got out of the clubs. We would go to the North End to have like coffee and pastry at that whatever it was. I think there was a few places that we would go to, but I thought I think you said Mike's was the name of it. I'm pretty sure it was the same place. Anyway, so after that, though, a lot of times because there'd be so many people, we would leave and like walk, wander around, especially if people were like had been drinking and they wanted to try to sober up a little, we might wander around. For some reason, I wandered by the aquarium and it was like five in the morning and the sea lion was giving birth. And I was the first, like, I was the only person there. I, I don't remember what happened to the people who were with me or how I got alone, but for some reason I was the only person there and this sea lion had a baby right in front of me, right there. And I remember, like, thinking, well, somebody at the aquarium should probably come out here and, like, check out this animal, right? This, this woman who just gave birth to a little cute little cub. And then I wondered, well, since I was the first person to see it, do you think they'd name it after me? And so finally, when people from the aquarium came out and they were like working with the, the mother and the baby, I was like talking to one of the dudes and I was like, yeah, my name is this if you guys want to name the baby. And he's like, oh, no, the baby are, has already been named long before you got here. <laughs> I was like, that does it well. If it needs a middle name, <laughs> can you take my middle name? If you Googled, forget the year, but like, I think it was a sea lion. I'm almost positive. It might've just been like a regular seal, but I'm pretty sure it was a sea lion. Uh, one born in like Boston at the aquarium. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the birth that I saw. Although it may be like a very common occurrence and maybe I, I you know, there's births there every year, but it was just such a random thing to have happen. And I can't for the life of you tell you details about why, where everybody I was with went, why I was there alone, why it was five in the morning. I've no, I don't remember any of that. For all I know, I slept walk there. It could be an entire dream too. Like I could have just dreamed the entire thing. At one time I knew the name of that seal though. Used to like the aquarium, though. I still do. If I travel, I like to go to the aquariums. Different ones. See them. See how they're laid out. See all the different fish. My favorite are the oct octopus. Octopi. I really like them as a creature. Like, I, I've always liked them since I was a kid. I know people like to eat them. I think that's crazy as I think they're super cool. I don't think I'd want to. I mean, we've I grew up like eating things like calamari, but like an actual octopus, I would probably be horrified. Um, so I like to go see them when they're in the aquariums. I think they finally categorized um, octopi maybe as like too smart to eat although i'm pretty sure that they still sell them but i think they classify like scientists are like yeah you know they're as smart as a dog or something like that or smarter than a dog i think they're supposed to be as smart as crows and i know crows are really smart like ravens and crows are like super super smart they're supposed to be as smart as like a, a kid in kindergarten so All right, we have plenty of cinnamon. We need apples, we need caramel, and we need almonds. The almonds, we don't need a lot of. So we'll do this. We'll try to do this in 40 seconds. See if we can get it. So I'm just going to run in, talk to this dude. Click, 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 click. Nope, I screwed it up already. 
It's so dumb. <laughs> Alright, drop that. Move. Color spray, fireball. Are they all dead? No! Oh, bro. You know, it sucks when, for some, I don't know if it's lag, like, you saw I hit him with the lightning storm, and he didn't die. It's bullshit. So, part of the speed runs in this, see, it's one of the reasons why this game is sort of frustrating, because it doesn't always respond to you being a really, like, good player. The game itself sometimes just can't handle it. It's something if you ever play Lord of the Rings, um, that message you see it all the time. Too many requests, please slow down. Too many requests, please slow down. It's like sometimes the, um, you know, the game itself gets bogged down. That's probably, I want to say like 55 seconds, right? Yeah, way over a minute and four seconds. It's okay though, we have four stars. And I think I just need to do this one more time to get some almonds for that horse. But I keep, you know, I keep thinking as I'm farming for this horse is do I even want the horse? Like, it's just a green version of the blue horse. I already have the blue horse. I don't really, people do like the, um, the Reaper outfit, the, the one that you can farm from this event, the colored outfit. I think it's a cool outfit, but I want it to be like a little bit different than it is on my character. And so as a result, I don't usually wear it, if that makes sense. So it's not like I'm going to wear that and then match it with the horse. I don't think I'd ever do that. Even if I didn't have the hardcore version of the horse, that makes me use that instead. Um, I'm assuming there's a monster in here that I missed. Yeah. Okay, Vorn's on his way. You did 45 seconds. Yeah, and that's my opinion. That's fantastic time. I think that's a really good time. I've done it in four. I did one 43 seconds, but I think if you're if you're sub 50, you're doing really well. That one took me a minute. But if you think about that, like I'm running, you know, in a sovereign two, I'm getting almost 30,000 XP per run. Uh, when you get up higher level, the XP gets even better. If I were in my level 29 gear, I'd be doing this at level 39, so I'd be getting, like, the max XP for it. But the gear that I'm in... Alright, so I have over 250 of that, that, that. I need those two. So caramel comes from this. Oh, no, that's cinnamon. Alright, so we'll get apples before we get caramel. Is it caramel or is it caramel? I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a caramel or a caramel guy. I like chocolate. I don't really like that very sweet. I know people go mental for it and really like it, but it's not my thing. Some people like cilantro. Some people don't. I do not like cilantro. If you're wondering, if you're sitting in chat loving cilantro, then that's cool because you can have all the cilantro that I would have had, but I don't want because I don't like it. So it's all the more for you. I think it tastes like soap. I think it's a genetic thing too. I think like it, there's like a specific like genetic setup that either you love cilantro or you think it tastes like soap. I think it's, I don't know anybody who just ca like kind of casually is accepting of it. Either people love it or they hate it. I think it's the same way with avocados, right? 
I do like avocados. I know people don't. I know some people hate guacamole. I hope they just don't like them at all. I think they're cool. I like avocados on toast. I think that's a great like thing people started doing. I think it's cool. It makes sense, right? Okay, the Supreme Pumpkin is no more. It's gonna do the right shot. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's good. Sometimes it just like launches you over the city completely. And then we could do it as a, as a test. The end one never works. That ballista right there always shoots me into the side of the mountain. I don't know why. Because I use it exactly the same as the other one. up all the junk loot that I don't need. All right, here we go. Launch myself into the side of the mountain. Yeah, I didn't touch anything. I did it exactly the same as the other one. I should just go straight to the end, but nope, there it is, right into the side of the mountain. It's so stupid. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It used to work. I think they're hacking, too, right? How can they hit me from that far away? Those damn blights. Alright, we, we have a ton of apples. Holy shit. I just need... Caramel? Now? Is that how we say it? My brain wants to say caramel. I don't know which the proper way to say it is. And I don't know why I would say it different than other people say it. Uh, getting ahead at Lord's Mark. Do I want to do that one? Or do I want to do this one? Uh, this one gives you more, right? I think. Do you guys know which of these two gives you more caramel? Is it Hayweird or Lord's March? Didor. You did the snitch in 127. That's a really good time for snitch. I'm going to do Lord's March. I honestly think they give both give a lot of, of the, the mat, so I'm not... I think this is the longer of the two, though, right? Like, isn't it the longer? I think it is. Because this has, like, four different phases. Oh, God. I can't wait to get out of this build. Can't wait to let my wild magic go away. Really want to go back to being a warlock. I've already decided, though, for my attempt at a lantern, I'm going to do a dragon lord. Like, the video I posted on my YouTube channel... Um, about, like, what I'm going to do on Hardcore. It's pretty much exactly what I'm going to do over there. Like, I'm going to make a, um... I'll probably do my builds on a drow and sh 
just make a uh, charisma based dragon lord and then see if I can fill up a lantern with it. I, I need to look at the rewards though. Like I'll do that after this quest. I'll go over and see if I can find the rewards. So I can take a look at them, at least to talk about them, to see if I think they look good or not. I mean, from what I see, saw on the test server, they looked okay. Were, were they items that I felt like I needed? No, not at all. And my biggest disappointment, and I'm not sure if this is the case, which is why I want to look, is that I think the hardcore versions were like the same, but they just had the hardcore skull on them. Um, so, but the hardcore skull was just really small. So, I mean, it, again, that was a test server. It could have not been accurate to what's going to be live, but I can't see myself going really that far out of my way just to earn a tiny little hardcore skull. Like it doesn't, you know, if the, if the, if they look the same. You're going to be in Tucson when Cormare opens and you hope no one takes your name. I don't know what your name is in game, but for some reason, even though DDO is an old game and the community is not that big, people do tend to go and like snag up names. I don't know why. I think it's just people being people, right? Like... It happens over in Lord of the Rings. I couldn't get any of my names in Lord of the Rings. And you know what happened? When I tried to make my characters and I couldn't get my names, I logged off. I didn't. I'm not playing on that server. I didn't even make characters on the server because I'm like, why am I going to... If I can't get the names I want, why am I going to play over there? Like, why am I even going to... It's dumb. Like, the whole idea of... Uh, the names I have on Brandywine I made when that server opened, right? So... I tried to do the same thing again, and I missed it because I wasn't there, like, immediately when the server opened. So, it's just the way it goes in MMO land. I really like the way Blizzard handles character names with Battle.net, where you just have to name your Battle.net account, and then any character on your account can have any name because, basically, your Battle.net name is made invisible, and it's like a unique tag on whatever name you want. So we could all have the character name Joe. There could be six Joes, but they the all the different battle nets, you know, we would all have a different battle net. Um bat using the battle net tag isn't super easy. Like I've I want to change my battle net tag now, but um I think they make you pay money to do it. I think I have to pay like fifty bucks to do it and I just haven't done it because I'm like that's stupid. I need to move servers too. Like, not that I'm ever going to play WoW again, but my mate, the the tune I had in WoW is on a server that like people I were were playing with all left, and so now I need to move it to a different server. But I haven't done that because I probably won't play. I thought I was going going to do like season of discovery or maybe try WoW the hardcore, but I decided it's too much time. Too much of an investment in time for, for me to do that. Unless I was just going to like live stream it all the time. But the reality is WoW has so many live streamers. They don't need, you know, another one. Right? Especially, you know, like... Um, someone who doesn't really know WoW super well. Because I haven't really played it a lot. It'd be different if I played it since it launched. Like, this game. One of the reasons that I play this game a lot still and, and stream it and stuff is because I've been playing it for so... Like, I've played it since it was in beta. And I think it's just sort of interesting that, you know, somebody might have played this game that long. Because a lot of people that I used to play with no longer play. So I think I'm in a, a small group of people who have been playing uh, since the game was made. I do the same thing with Lord of the Rings Online, and I used to play that game a lot. Like, I'm a huge Tolkien nerd, but um, I have not been happy with that game in a long, long time. And so it's just really hard for me to go back and play it. I just, you know, every once in a while I'll go over there, I'll make a level one hunter, 
and then I'll go all the way up through Moria into Mirkwood, and then I lose interest right around there. Which is similar to what happened in reality, like when they released Mirkwood, I thought it was cool, but that's when I started losing interest. There's just too many levels, there's too many abilities, there's just too much stuff going on. Um, I think they need to level squish it, to be honest. I think they need to drop the entire level of the game down to 50. And just make it so that even though there's 40 million quests, um, you know, that you cap out at 50. It just feels like there's just way too many levels. But I know that they won't. They actually sell, like, the power-ups so people can go immediately to level 150 or whatever the new cap is, 160. And then you just have to play the last 10 levels. Uh, I don't know. I just... From my perspective, Moria was the best. Like, the Moria expansion was super, super fun. Uh, really, really good. And then, you know, it just kind of fell off a cliff for me, so... But I used to really like PvPing in the, uh, the Mornlands or whatever it's called. The, the Etten Moors. Yeah, the Etten Moors. Used to be fun. But I used to play a monster. And then it used to be super hard to level up your monster. So if you had a high level monster, it showed that you were you had a lot of skill and you were you were probably a good player. And then they made all the monster skills like pay to pay to have. And then everybody I know who played monster stopped when they did that. So the pay to win model clearly killed the monster side of that game. And I haven't played it since. I think we're done with that anyway. Like, let's go grab this level. Do I want the horse is the question. Oh, you're doing soul leader. Soul leader is really good. So you're, are you doing, um, what is that? Trap the soul? Trap the Soul seems to kill everything in R10. Like, I, I notice whenever I do R10s that people are doing Trap the Soul constantly on everything, and it's killing everything all the time. So I keep thinking to myself, I really need to try that out on my Warlock. So I think I actually did spec one of my Warlocks into Soul Eater just to do that. Wow. Some of these feats are cool. I can report, I have tried one of these new feats that is supposed to auto-res your companions, and I noticed that it did not work. Now, I might have, you know, maybe it was fixed. I'm not seeing it here in this list, but maybe I don't have access to it yet. Um, but I just noticed my hirelings were not being auto rust, so. Okay, all these are action boosts. I'm not doing any action boosts on this character. Finger Devour, Circle of Death. Yeah, Whale, Mass Hold, sure. Yeah, probably kills everything. That's a fun gameplay right there that you're doing. Some of the most fun I've had in DDO was when they first released Deep Gnome and I did all my PK monster. Like, that was super fun, PKing everything. Um, here, I think what we're going to do is crush weakness. Even though we're not really making things helpful now, we will later on. It really is the only good thing. First Blood is good. Like, I could do First Blood because I have enough points in my build eventually to grab Bring Darkness, which allows you to turn First Blood into a Spellcaster um, debuff. So you can actually apply it to anything that you hit, a, you hit with your spells. It works, it works really well. I like it, but I'm probably not going to be... So I'm only going to level 30. And... It's probably not going to matter. Like, I don't think it matters. 
So probably better for me would be to take something like Crush Weakness because I am color spraying and I have Hold Monster. So it would just allow me to do more damage to something that I actually color sprayed or held. Right? Like... So it would be better for us. Um, but not going to worry about it just because I'm not going to cap... I'm going to reincarnate immediately. Whether that's before Cormier goes launches or after, this is probably not going to be until after. Right, because if that's launching Wednesday afternoon, like I'm going to log in over there, set up the guilds, get the hardcore people going, get my tunes all set up, and then it's pretty much it, right? Like I'm now I'm on a brand new server, I have nothing, um, okay, you know, like, then I have to sort of figure out some economy, which is why I was saying, like, oh, well, doing the Halloween event probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but I won't have a tune near Cap, so I don't think I'd want to do the Halloween stuff in Heroics, it wouldn't really make any sense, but, so we're able to upgrade our ring to that. Which is spell resist sheltering and saves, which I always make. This is the ring that I always make myself. Um, and I always wear it if I can. It's not all not every class benefits from it, like or race or whatever, but for the most part. And then I'm doing a five piece salt marsh epic set. And I have a uh three piece esoteric initiate. My boots are Flightfoot Greaves, level 10. My gloves are the Silver Sigil from the Borderlands, which that's the first place I'm going to farm on the new server. Um, this is my trinket. It's the Voice of the Master that has a Lunar Magic piece in it for the extra spell resist. And my Charisma boost. And then my main hand is this Ornamental Dagger that I have with a cobalt gem that has, I think, 9 out of the 10 or 10 or 9 out of the 11 slots that you can have. I don't remember how many, what the maximum is, but I have 9. I think there's 3 sparks, right? Are there still, or did they add another one? So now there's 11. I forget. I, I don't raid a lot, so I don't know exactly how many extra sparks you can get for it, but thought I was only missing one spark. Maybe I'm wrong. Still, though, with nine filigrees, it's it's strong. Um, I didn't roll off this. So I got a seventy-one. Pretty good. I have got a plus two racial tome from doing the silver rolls. So I always try to do the silver rolls. I think it's a good, I think it's a good approach. You know, so a lot of people think the silver rolls are a waste of time, but I have got like some really good things from doing the silver rolls. I mean, plus two racial tome. That's really good. Although now, I think, aren't they giving those out with one of the expansions that we just got? I honestly forget. Do I need the horse? What do you guys think? That's the horse I really want right there. I have still have not got one of those. I just haven't done that raid that much. It's a green reaper mount. No. 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 
All right, maybe. I have the blue one. I have the red one. Is there a yellow one yet? No, next year will be yellow. Like, it drives me crazy that we just don't get them all at once. They're going to put them out once a year. Purple? Is there a purple horse? I don't think there's a purple mount. I like the purple colored armor. Almost positive I have it. Yeah, I'm almost positive I have all the armors. Unless they added a new armor this year. I'm almost positive I have this harvest stuff too. I could be wrong though. I just have to check my... My tune. And then the other thing too is the level 32 version of all these. I don't think I have any of these, but I don't know if I need them. Like, the best is that enhanced ghostly on the Cloak of Night. Like, that's really good. Not a lot of items have that, so that's cool. But, and also Dodge 14 is really good. But Nightmare Guard is garbage just because it's not going to trigger. I mean, even when it triggers, it won't hit because it's not, it doesn't tell us what the DCs are. But if the DC's not at least 100 on that, which it should be, it doesn't say it though, but then it won't actually PK anything. Um, death block is completely irrelevant like to have because you already have death block on like 20 different other things at level 32. Invisibility guard is really nice like in theory, but because invisibility doesn't really work, it doesn't really help. I mean, it helps a little bit, but not enough that it's going to keep you alive. Um, and then the DR-15 is just a complete waste. Like, in order for that to be useful, that should be DR-100, I think. My opinion. For that to be useful. <clears throat> and you might say, wow, DR-100, that's crazy. Nothing would ever damage you, bro. Like, th you know, you guys know if you're playing. Things hit you for thousands and thousands at once. So it's not like having DR-100 would even keep you alive. What... What difference does it make if you get hit for 1,500 and you only take 1,400? Like, you're st it's still a lot. Like, 15 is not even close to being useful. There's no damage amount that in that range, in, that, in Legendary, that's going to do 15 damage to you. That's just it's, it's stupid. So I don't even think... My, my point is, I don't think it's really worth it, unless you needed the Enhanced Ghostly. Um... <clears throat> these throwing daggers, like I bought a couple at level four to have throwing daggers that have ghost touch on it. And, and maybe if you were doing a, like a dagger thrower Vistani build, but superior Vorpal, like I can't believe that only gives you 0.05 W. That should give you more than that. It's superior Vorpal. The other thing I can't believe is it's only 2,500 hit points. Otherwise, it does 250 hit points. Like, a Vorpal hit is supposed to be an insta-death, and instead, what they've turned it into is you roll a 20, you confirm a 20 to do 250 extra damage. With mobs that have 15,000, 20,000, 40,000 hit points, it's not like a percentage. Like, if that did, you know, if mobs had above a certain threshold of hit points, it did a guaranteed, like, 80% of their health kind of like harm, then I would think Vorpal would be really cool because then it would be kind of accurate to like the spirit of Vorpal. Like a Vorpal, you guys know this if you play pen and paper, a Vorpal blade is supposed to be a kill blade. Like you you roll to chop something's head off. It's not like a, a severe wound blade. I mean, you, you certainly could, um, but it's going to sever whatever you touch with it. So... To have it where it's not instantly killing or at least getting something super close to an instant kill. It just, it's one of the things that drives me crazy. Like not, We were talking about this a long time ago like when I was going over my first year playing in the boss immunities, how they weren't in the game then and they added them to the game. That's another thing about Vorpal. Vorpal used to be an insta-kill. It used to be you roll a 20 and whatever you hit died. That was it. Very, very simple. Of course, they altered that because that's super OP, 
and they made it that you needed to confirm the critical hit and then it would die and, and that used to even be a stretch because you know a lot of people didn't have that extra confirm then they added in all the other stuff to allow you to confirm the hit easier um, but then for some reason they made a decision to turn it into a percentage of health rather than an than a black or white insta kill like effect like an on or off or whatever however computer speak say it binary i just haven't i think it's a waste it should not be 2500 if they're going to keep it like that and they want to do like a percentage and they don't want to do my idea of like minusing 90 percent of the 80 percent of the hit points then it should be twenty five thousand hit points because and they should take you know like twenty five thousand hit points worth of damage not 250 damage like it should be a big a massive massive hit i think vorpal should actually mean like vorpal and then if they're like well it's too common then just make it less common Make it something that you have to chase after and hunt. Another good example is disruption. Disruption used to be an insta-kill. Like if you hit an undead with disruption, it would instantly, it was ev like evaporated. There was no role for it. It just instantly deleted the undead. And now they they made it basically the same as Vorpal, which is, I, I think it's pretty useless. I mean, I don't play melee. Maybe you guys who play melee might disagree with me uh but i just haven't seen any reason to get excited about it i think maybe if they change something with the vorpal effect and maybe they made it like auto root you or auto stun you like if you if you actually vorpaled them just to give it some more of an oomph like a hit um but you know i mean I've submitted suggestions like that and they never, they don't listen to anything that I suggest. So I try, but it doesn't matter. So look, all these weapons have Vorpal on them. So the best use of Vorpal recently was a couple years ago when the low level Vorpals was, were still spawning and you could find them in hardcore season one and two. So you could basically find a, like a low level, like a level one Vorpal sword and just run around in waterworks with it not in the harbor. And then it worked. Then it works. Because kobolds don't have a lot of hit points anyway on elite. So when you Vorpal them, they just die. Uh, especially if you found like a Vorpal repeater. That was really cool. Like a lot of fun. But I kind of guess there's really nothing else I see in this list that I might even use. So I'm probably am going to buy the horse. I have like three versions of obviously, cause that's the name of my guild. I have like three versions of that right there. The death smile. I have the silence. I have the hood of unrest and the hat, the night hag hat. I have all the different colored armors. I have the two brooms. I have the pumpkins. I have the little head set with the wings on it. I have these, I have all this stuff. I'm not buying the candy. I'm off the candy. It's a waste of space, so I don't get it. Um, I don't know anything about the ghost glamour, so I don't think I'll use that. So I might save my... I might not do anything yet, Like, and I might just wait until this event is coming to an end and just buy up a bunch of like these festive these are always good and these are sort of like long-term investments if you need money even though a lot of people buy these and, and sell them on the gtn you usually can get a few astral shards for them if you list them especially if you list them in like off off season like obviously if you list them now they're super common but if you wait and list them in the summer um but even aside if you didn't do that they're good to have like it's another source of whatever your main stat is if you're like a caster and it's also more hit points all this other stuff i don't care about at all and then here's their midnight this is they these are certainly worth buying more of 
but I have a stack already, so uh, I don't need to do that yet. So I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure, because I just don't know if I'm going to use that horse or if I even want to get it. And I really hope, nobody has talked about this, but going forward with like these new servers that they're adding, if they allow us ever to move like off of these existing servers onto the main server, right now it's going to be like, it's a new server, you cannot transfer to it, you have to make a tune on it, brand new, right? Um, but if they did allow us to transfer to it, then will will they be able to like move my stable because like i have a lot of mounts in here like i don't know how many of you guys got this mount but this mount is pretty rare like i don't know many people who have this one i'm sure people have it like the albino raptor but um i forget where i got it too like it was something that they did and not that i use it a lot but i don't want to lose it right like I mean, it's just one of those things. My hardcore mounts. I see only the red and the and the blue. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, somebody's sending me a text. Um, let's go in and try that quest again. Hopefully I didn't just tank my game out. Yeah, the candies are 40 seconds now. So they upped that from 20 seconds to 40 seconds, right? Um, but if you remember the candies back, they used to be an hour, right? Like they used to, used to click them off. So I used to have, I used to have those candies on all my characters and I would have, I think it was three, maybe it was four different candies. And so like I'd log in, I drink an XP potion and then I would click off all those candies and then I would have all of the, the buffs for an hour. Oh god, I'm like really lagging. Wow. How about that? I'm like rooted to the ground. Yeah, I don't know what server you guys are playing on, but... I mean, this is the part of the live server experience that is just complete bullshit. Like, look at look at how I'm, like, rubber banding around. I can't even move. So let's check my ping. My latency, I'm at 34, 36. That's slow. Like, normally it's around 24. But I'm not seeing any loss. Argo. Yeah, Argo's a great server. I like Argo. If I weren't on Sarlona, I, I would play on Argo. I have tunes over there. Oh, it looks like the lag is off. Okay, that's better. Okay, the lag is back. Look at that, I'm stuck in the air. <laughs> and now I'm stuck on the ground. Now I'm stuck in the air. <laughs> Bro, it's bad. It's bad. Oh, my latency jumped up to 52. Okay, so maybe something's going on. Oh, you're on Kenneth. Yeah, Kenneth, so Kenneth used to be, uh, like, populated, and then for some reason there was, like, a mass exodus. 
I have tunes on Kenneth as well. I used to play on Kenneth because whenever I looked at the LFM panel for Kenneth, it was like super filled. Um, now, like it looks like Sarlona has really good. Like that's a pretty good LFM panel for Sarlona on a Friday night. What I'm waiting for is um, we have a lot of players on Sarlona from Asia, people from China and stuff. A lot of times I have no idea what they're saying because I don't speak Chinese, but sometimes I'm able to get into their groups. They do a lot of R10 and I'm waiting for somebody to run an R10 Myth Draenor so I can jump into it. I have not done that yet, but I haven't seen like an R10 Myth Draenor group. I used to do that a lot for the Salt Marsh when the Salt Marsh launched, and I used to think it was a lot of fun. Somebody's doing Orchard Slayers. They're all alone. Somebody's running keys. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming Salt Marsh means they're running around in the Slayer zone. Druid's Curse is always fun. And then High Road is always fun. Oh, and he's doing Kenneth challenges. You don't usually see that, man. Kenneth challenges. I love the Kenneth challenges. I lived in the Kenneth challenges for a long time. I have a lot of the rewards. All right, so I'm still laggy. I'm going to go AFK, refresh my tea, stretch, take a break uh, for five, right? Like, I'll see if my... Um, I plan to come back and play, but I'll see if my stream has an ad ready to go. I'll run that if it is. Which sounds idiotic to say. I don't really like the ads, but if I can time it out from when I'm going AFK, at least we can all, like, stretch together while that bullshit is running but it doesn't look like i'm going to be actually be able to do that because looking at my stream manager it looks like the the ads are grayed out so they're not going to let me run one now so i'm just basically i'll do what i did earlier i will open my build and then i'll leave it open for people who want to like check out what i'm doing um you can see all how i spent all my points Right, so there's my heroic. Here's over here is the epic, and then that's my Reaper stuff. And we might as well, while I'm here, spend. So this natural shielding is always great, gives me more hit points, but then if I summon anything, it's going to buff it. Uh, and then I'm working on getting my DCs for Evoke and Illusion higher. Uh, there's real no re reason for me to blast it at this point because the content that I'm doing isn't super hard. So I'll probably just throw that one over there and evoke. And so that's how I have my prior to me being uh, level 23 for level 20, 21, and 22. Instead of Shadow Dancer, I was in Grand Master of Flowers using that mantle as my mantle. I was not in this mantle here, which is, I'm in the heart mantle now, but I was using Grand Master of Flowers because I wanted the, the speed boost, which is super cool. Like, as a caster, you can still use um, any mantle. So even though that's a melee mantle, it gives you a speed boost. It makes you immune to knockdown, makes you immune to taking falling damage. Like, it's just a really good uh all around mantle like if if it weren't for the extra damage boost that i get from this heart mantle i would probably stay in grandmaster flowers like my entire you know tunes uh epic life like legendary life it's just such a great uh destiny mantle but we eventually get knocked down immunity here from stand against the tide so i yeah, i lose that I usually run with feather falling, so I don't need to worry about the falling damage. And then the 15% the speed boost, we do end up getting like speed boosts later. Um, but it still is nice. Like there isn't really another mantle that gives you a stacking 15%. So 
that's one part of that mantle that it's it's tough to let go but we usually go into exalted angel and get the exalted flight which makes you go a lot faster so it it's sort of you don't really notice it um but yeah, I'll eventually go all the way up in Primal and get my minion. And then, you know, sh she'll throw out a bunch of heals on me and stuff. But we're not going to play that long, though, because I'm going to reincarnate. Like, I'll get to level 30 and then I'll reincarnate. I'm not going into legendaries because I just want to get out. I want to change my build, you know, like I want to get out of this sorcerer stuff. So I'm going to go AFK 5. And I'll be right back. I'm going to refresh my tea and stretch. Okay, I'm back. God, I am on a, like, a different chair. Because the chair I was on, like, started to make me have pain. And I wanted to solve the pain, so I switched the chair to my old chair. But now I'm remembering why I replaced the old chair, because it causes a different type of pain in a different location. I think what's the moral of this story is that I need to eventually work towards buying one of those, what are they, Herman Miller? $4,000 gamer chairs. I don't think they're that much, but they're super expensive, but they're supposed to be like the most comfortable chair in the world that you can sit in forever and ever and ever. So I got to do it because the problem is if you have a shitty chair, right? It fucks your back up. It fucks your legs up. It, it like tweaks out your hamstrings. It like twists. Like, oh, it's, it's awful. So while this chair is temporarily working, it's like, I also need to get rid of this fucking thing because it's making my back hurt. Use my other chair, which makes my legs hurt. The good news is, though, that when I upgraded my PC, I got monitors that do like a, I want to say it's like a 200 or 300 refresh or something like that, which replaced my old monitor that did like a 60 refresh, I think it was. And so like I used to get migraines, but now these, the monitors are good on my, on my eyes. So Don't get old. That's the moral. And by old, what do we mean? I think they were <laughs> in in the media, right? There. <laughs> this made me laugh, right? So in the media, on on the internet, online dating sites have noticed a trend where older people are trying to hook up with younger people right this is nothing new people do this in reality not just on dating sites older guys go for younger girls and now um older women are going for younger guys and so guy the guy the younger guy has had a, a word for this they call it hag maxing which is like crazy right so the 20 year old guy goes out with a 30 year old they call it hag maxing. And so somebody asked online, well, how old is old enough to be a hag? And somebody online said like 22. So I think according to the internet, I, not that I'm a hag, but like my age bracket puts me into the category of being like an elder hag, right? Like so old, even though I'm not that old. In the online world, I'm like ancient. But anyway, that made me laugh when I read that. Because I'm like, bro, these, these people who say that, they think they're going to be alive forever. They think they're going to be 18 forever. No. Let's see if they look as good... When they're my age.
They might. I'm not even going to bother hag maxing though. I've given up. What I'm going to do is wait for a robot. And then I'll just marry a robot. That'll be that. It's problem solved. And if, if we have a fight, there's no marriage counseling. It's I just have to patch the robot, right? We just patch it out. Just like a software upgrade for the video game. If we, we get some behavior that's buggy, we just patch it up. We're gonna go full on Blade Runner. I don't even care if it's a robot. I, if even if we're like a holographic AI, like in the Blade Runner 2, that would be fine. Yep. All good. We're almost there, too. Like, we're almost there where the AI, when it talks to you, it sounds human. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't trigger the uncanny valley. A lot of the, um, the photorealistic stuff is, is getting to the point where it's hard to tell. Um, another thing, too, is, like, the, the actual animatronic of Robot, like, the way that we animate them right now is still looks a little creepy. So, I think we're really close, though. Maybe five years. I just hope they make uh, the robots affordable to get, because I would love to get one. Even if I didn't get, like, a, a a waifu, right? Even if it were just, like, a little archer unit that could go around and make tea and, uh, you know, like, show me interesting things on the internet. Be like a robot cat. That would be really cool, too. Uh, you know, it could just be that this Night Revels Crypt is... Because it's tanking out in here, too. I'm going to try to switch to Instance 2. Maybe that'll fix it. It could just be that the game server is like... Oh my god, we have more than 15 people in one spot. I can't handle it. The little hamster fell off his wheel. Yeah, exactly. I'm reading the chat now. You take 8,653 damage and 15 of it was blocked by that. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. It doesn't matter. Like, it's so, it's so low, it's useless. It's almost silly how low it is. Like, it's like the game... Like, well, here's a massive idea. What if it was DR 15%? How about that? Like, wouldn't that be better? Ah, oh, Mata Keys. Damn it. I know people sell the keys. But I would only buy the keys if I could buy a stack of the keys, like 10 keys for like three Astro Shards. And they usually don't sell them that cheap until the end of the event, if they even ever do. Sometimes the, the keys never get that cheap. Is my chocolate boost off already? What the? Alright, there. I added it again. God, it's almost like I've been streaming for a couple hours now. Who knew? The time flies when you're having fun. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun. I hope you guys who stick around are entertained. Or at least amused. Maybe my stream is interesting, kind of like a cryptid. Finding a computer in a jungle and sitting down at it for the first time. 
discovering that it could understand the language. At one point in my life, I was really obsessed by cryptids. You know, I thought being a cryptid hunter would actually be like a legitimate occupation to do. Right? I kind of missed those days. I kind of missed those days where I thought that that would be really cool. I mean, people still do it. You can still do it, right? But... I thought it would just be actually, like, really cool. Like, what if I'm the guy who finds Bigfoot? Right? Like, that would have been great. What if I was the guy who discovered where the Loch Ness Monster slept? We get them all? No, that quell. That quell always does something. Alright, let's see if we can get all these dudes. There we go. Got them all. Well, we hit one really, really big. Get the specters before they vanish. Now two of them got away. Okay, how about all those? Nope, I hit the, the hill. So what I'm saying about this, like, it takes a lot to get in a groove. You can get in a groove, though. I have been in a groove. Like, that one should have obliterated them all, but it didn't. This one will get them. Yep. Sometimes you have to completely stop moving in order for it to work. That worked. Let's get them all over there. Yep. Oh, there was a ghoul. An extra ghoul. And I missed him twice. Okay, we got him. I get all these dudes. Yes. I'm pretty good on mana, too, considering I have everything maximized, empowered, intensified, quickened, heightened. And I'm not, like, watching my spell casts. Right? To still have 35% mana going through here, that's really good. 3 minutes, 30 seconds. That's pretty good. I think, like I said, the best time you can get, I think I've seen people doing, like, 2 minutes, 2 minutes, 30 seconds, somewhere around there. So, I mean, I'm still slow, but it's a lot better than the first one I did at the beginning of the stream where it was like five minutes or something stupid like that. How many keys did I get is the real question. Right, a good run? How, what's a good run? I got four keys. I think that's pretty good, actually. I think another VIP bonus that would be really good is for us to be able to open like a, a bank, our bank from anywhere. So like I would open my bank right now, standing here. I think that would be a real good quality of life without needing to go to a banker. If it's true that our stuff is with us at all times in the bank and we just can't see it, why, why don't they just allow us if we sub to be able to see it? Gonna sell all of this junk. I'm just looking like casually to see if I got any slotted items, but I don't see any. And then I don't know if you guys have the same issue that I have, but sometimes when I click onto the sell menu here, it like, like stalls. So I can't like click these things really fast. I have to kind of click them slow. Um, that I'm saving. The rest of this stuff I'm going to sell.
two levels. So far, we're doing great. I think we've killed every group we hit. We're gonna wait for this stuff to gather up on us and then just chuck a ball, fireball at them. Nice. Let's see if we can get all them. That one zombie. He is always a troublemaker. I'm gonna try to get these dudes. Yep. It's tough to get the Doom Sphere. Oh, we did, we got it. And then this Quell can be hard. Like, if it's here. I don't know if it... Alright, that looks good. We got one group left. Um, I'm gonna let them gather on me. Oh, we got it. Oh, he didn't take damage from that. Okay, can I get them all? Yeah, we got them. That's good. See, we're cooking now. Oh, except for the specters. See if I can get all these. Yep, we got them all. I can see I'm doing bad, though, because... You see how it says seven? I should be on five. All right, there's five. All right, let's go. Oh, I targeted the wrong monster. All right. Okay, we got all of them. Let me target him. Try to get all of them. Got him. Try to get all these. Got him. Got two speed boosts left. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get that lich immediately with the, the attack. Oh, I targeted the wrong thing. That sucks. All right, there we go. A pretty quick 25,000 experience. I did it in two minutes and 42 seconds. So pretty fast. Should be able to get it down to like two and a half minutes. Super boring though. Like I said, um, when I usually do this alone, I usually watch a movie or like listen to an audio book or... Anything to distract me from just being bored out of my mind by running the same thing over and over. But a lot of that has to do with the fact that, I mean, I've been doing this event for how long has it been in the game? A decade? Like, it's a little different now than it was originally, but. All right, we have two groups to go. They better group up on me. Did I really not? Really? What what's going on with these? Okay, this should be it right here. Yeah. A lot of times, part of the trick to getting it is to not move. Because, like, the monsters have their, like, home where they are initially. And if they see you, they'll move. And then they start, like, moving out of position. And sometimes they're just spread all over, like, that group right there.
All right, we're going to try to get all these. So first group. Second group. Can I get it before they move? No, that stupid archer. Okay, he's dead. Third group. Should be able to. Yep, okay. Scarecrows. Almost. I missed one. This group here. Can I jump? Okay, almost, but I missed one. So there should be... Oh, that one died. Okay, great. There's that. Can I color spray him? Yep. Let me see if I can tag all them. Yep. Can I tag all these? Yep. Hopefully. Yep. Okay. Got them. Cool. Get these dudes before they move. Yep. Great. It's easier if you have, like, um, the face step or the angel wings, because then you can zip through. Oh, come on. I think they should just surrender. We did that 249. A little slower. I've been trying to do 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I mean, it's going to be super hard to do because it means I have to hit every single group. Like, I can't mess up one group. But it's something to do when you're doing this to try for because, like we were saying, it, it gets pretty boring. So having this sort of a goal to make it at least somewhat interesting to try to beat your own time. So the time we're trying to beat right now is 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Like, that's what we want to hit. We can hit two minutes and 30 seconds, then we did really well. So I've got to wait for this archer to spawn and then kill it. Because the archer won't follow me. They just sort of sit there. I'm not going to wait for these to come. I'm going to try. That shadow left. I don't know why. I don't understand why sometimes the mobs in this game will, like, wander away. But we're not going to stick around to find out. We're just going to keep moving. So we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to try to get all the groups that I can. Say I missed that. I don't know why I missed that white, but for some reason, completely missed him. And because I'm phased out, I don't do any damage. So I have to wait until I'm phased back in. Which is now. Okay, there we go. Now uh, that, again, that's not the game. That's the wild magic bullshit. So, so yet another reason why I can't wait to get out of this. All right, I missed. And I missed again. How about that dude? Will he open the gate? Nope. Yep, there it is. So we're, we're already off of it, I have a feeling. Okay, he's dead. I'm gonna try to tag all of these. So here's group one. Let's see if I can get group two before it moves. Yep. Hopefully everything's dead behind me. I'm not going to stop and look. Oh, one got away. He should follow me. And I turn around right here and I should be able to get him. No? Bro, where are you going? You're killing me. Where the hell did he go? He's here because I still have six. Oh, God. It just ruined the whole thing. I don't know where he went. And he... <laughs> so stupid, bro. I don't get it. Why? So instead of getting two and a half minutes on our finish time, it's going to be like five and a half minutes. Because of that one vampire who went invisible. Ah, oh, and the archer who's hanging out by himself. And the fact that I got dragon pox halfway through it, and it slowed me down. We should be able to get these dudes, though. Oh, okay, got him. Ah, I'm missing a group. It's back there, right? That that uh, that white that I missed. Okay, there it is. It's easier when you're not on a wild mage. 
like on a regular fire sork be easier because I wouldn't have to worry about like the like I just got phased out again when you phase out the wild magic phase it makes it so that you do zero damage so it's super annoying three and a half yeah we we added a minute we're going the wrong way Probably the best way to do it is to not try to do it, right? That would be the best way to do it. Alright, do we want to take a look at the new quest? Maybe we should take a look at the new quest and see if I can figure out what I missed. All right, speak to Francis. The bank was abandoned. Abandoned right after we got here. Bank employees ran off screaming. Now the bank has risen again. Spectre, Night Revels, Superstore. We're crammed with undead corpse of this building's full savings. Why do the forces of darkness need a super shore? That is a really good question, man. Um, because manifesting Maybar isn't easy. This is according to Murph, the skeleton head. So Murph says, the forces of darkness need supplies to spread their endless night. Fortunately, we've got everything you need right here. Sits, bloody axes, rusted hooks, severed heads, nameless warriors. Oh, and pumpkins. We have lots and lots of pumpkins. Don't even bother going to Maybar Mart looking for a deal on pumpkins. They can't beat our prices. So, I mean, I kind of like the campy humor. I like that idea of it, but I just didn't find this quest to be overall that engaging. But I missed something. Hopefully we can find it. This is the owner, right? Ah, oh, you must be the personal shopper I requested. Okay, he wants us to shop for him. I need your help to obtain some items on good authority. Seasonally available retailer has in stop stock a replica sun sword, a mounted griffin head, and a perfect pumpkin. I need you to get all three of these before I can complete my work. Go and bring them back to me. I've been building a set of limited edition collectible cloth humanoid figures some consider them creepy dolls but i find them oddly endearing okay so i'll bring you any creepy dolls that i find so i was able to find a creepy doll and i think that's where i missed my points last time the other thing and i don't know if you guys have done this the other thing i noticed is if you go on the top of these um skulls you can like uh like turn off those eyeballs and i'm not exactly sure like the best way to get up there so we won't do that yet but eventually we, we will so i'm assuming that these are other shoppers this is another reason why this quest didn't make any sense to me because like okay there's a lich in here but is this a shopper? Are they going to be happy about me blowing away people who are shopping in their store? That's why I didn't think it worked. Like, story-wise, I don't understand why all these undead are in here. Aside from the initial story that they just rose from the original shoppers, right? So, I don't know. It's a stretch, right? We need the secondary world to make sense. Like, yeah, you can make it as crazy as you want, but at least keep it consistent. Like, if these if these skeletons are in here shopping for pumpkins, can't I just shop with them? So, 
while we look around, we are hunting for like some of these things that we heard about. One of them are these creepy little dolls. I haven't seen any. Right? And we're looking, we're tabbing. Tabbing and looking on the, on each of the cabinet, I don't see any. I'm bugged. Like, okay, there we are. Uh, can I shut that off? No, it does not allow me to push any button on this skull. Maybe somebody watching knows how to do this quest and can tell me what I'm missing when I miss it. I don't see anything. All right, not up here anyway. Hey, Glassjaw, I have not. I will do it. I haven't done it, though. All right, we found a creepy doll. That's one. We're looking for two more. See, the first time I did this quest, I didn't get all the stars. I, For some reason, I missed something. And I think it's because I missed getting all these creepy dolls, so... And I know that there is a jump puzzle. I just wasn't able to like do it the first time I did this quest. So if you know this quest, then let me know like if I'm doing something wrong. I think so far I'm doing everything okay. Hopefully the lag isn't bad on this puzzle. Shit. Uh, the jump isn't required, just dolls and the items. The dolls only seem to have a few spawn locations, but can be in the box in the vault. Yeah, okay. Okay, we got it. They don't sparkle until you get right next to them. Okay. Good to know. Oh, I know the... Alright, so here's something that... So I'm going to use my necklace of the glib tongue. And I think I'm already blasting bluff. But the last time I was in here... Just want to check this. Yeah, I'm blasting bluff. I've got a hundred. 
I failed this. So, I mean, I think they have this turned way up. Look, I failed it again. So, I don't know if this dude is coded right. Unless it's just impossible. Like, they're just giving you the ability to make that roll, but it actually doesn't count. Or maybe you need to... Oh, did I? Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. So may I picked the wrong one. I'll try the next time I do this, I'll try making sure that I actually hit bluff then. Yeah, my dip low is not that high. I got phased out. I mean, even so, though, like, if 76 plus 12, like, the DC is high for these, right? I mean, this is story mode. Right? It's not like I'm in an R10. Like, that, this is, you know story content seems like that's a, a very high dc um i don't know how to do this without opening all of them maybe there's a way to tell but we grab the collectibles Found the hidden vault. This is another thing, like, I tried to knock this, and... Oh, I got it. I did get it. Okay. Last time I tried to knock that, I couldn't get it. Okay, there's the sun sword. Thought I was going to find, like, a little creepy doll in one of these boxes, but apparently no. It is a good, like, OCD. Like, it is satisfying clicking these boxes open, though. Uh, all right, the next thing is this hidden vault. What's in the hidden vault? A hag. Auntie Janeth. She's CR 31. Immune to fire. But she took a bunch of my acid damage. Alright, there's the griffin head. And now, I haven't seen another creepy doll. It look like these look like it, right? Probably in the first room. Okay. I don't think I'm missing anything, like... And I don't know how to get through there. I don't see anything here. I don't see anything there. So we'll just go back through the vault. I mean, compared to the other, all the quick almond quest, this one is very long. Like, in, I, I was just like, wow, this quest needs to give way more almonds for how long it is. Um, stuck. Okay. I don't know how to lower this one either. Like, I haven't figured that out. I don't see a hidden lever. Um, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to get through there. I'm getting lag 
like lag bubbles here and there. So, all right, so we're back in the first room and I don't know if this door ever opens, but I have not been able to open it. This room also is like doing something to my video card. I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but I'm feeling like uh, there's like a stutter in my video card as soon as I enter this room. All right, so I got one. I don't know if I'm even supposed to do these, but I know that you can get another one up here somewhere. Oh, God. Well, I missed that, but I don't see... Look, there's more of these little things, but... I can't click them. Check the corners. Yeah, yeah. I see a bunch of weird stuff. Maybe I should go trigger that... That dude. Okay, we give him the stuff, and then he makes a monster. That's great. Good job, dude. A monster with a replica sun sword who... Did I just heal him with electricity? I think I did. And that's it. So before you fight this dude, because I did the same exact thing I did last time and I didn't get all the stars. I only got four stars. So I still have not yet five starred this one. So before I fight this dude, I have to find, I'm assuming that last doll, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to get the doll. So I don't know where that last doll is. I've never been able to find it. I'll look around, right? You're telling me it's here. I just must have missed it. I mean, I kind of know what I'm looking for, but because I've never actually seen this thing, it's hard for me to believe it actually exists. Right? Um, guys, I feel like I looked at every, like, corner... All right, we definitely did this. Let's go around here. I didn't really do over here. There's another whole like area with these weird little dolls, but none of them are lighting up for me. Uh, this one, no, no. So is this random every time? I'm assuming, I hope, either that or uh, where does it spawn?
Oh, it's random. Yeah, well, it being random is lame. Does it ever spawn up here? See, I initially thought that you had to get behind that doorway there by hitting all of these weird eyeball levers in order to find the doll, but... I haven't figured out, like, if it even leads anywhere to do this sort of jumping around. Oh, there it is. All right, yeah. Okay. It doesn't count, though. I got all five stars, but it doesn't count because I had already finished the quest, unfortunately. Um, so what does the puzzle do? What if What happens if you do the puzzle? Does it open up uh, another room? Like, does it open up the, those doors right there? Because I know at the top, like on that head up there, there's another lever. Oh, it's just another chest. Okay, yeah. And if it's just random gear chest like this chest, then it's not worth... It's not worth the time. So, we got five stars eventually, but we did not qualify for the five star XP, which is unfortunate because the first time I did this quest, I was trying to get that massive XP spike and I missed it. Um, and which is on uh, considering that we found the second doll up top, I jumped all around the up top the first time I did it. I just didn't see anything up there. So it's unfortunate. So I still have not five star that. <laughs> But, all things considered, unless that's giving you, like, quadruple the amount of almonds, I think it's just way better to do this one. Because, I mean, I can do this one in 40 seconds. Or whatever it is. Like, I just I think that, while it's not terrible, um, I missed the co that coal chamber quest. You know, the one that they had... Here, the really long one that nobody really liked. I really liked that quest. I, I want to do that one. I, if I got to pick which quest would be here, that's the quest it would have been. Because I know anytime I would do it, even though it was a long quest, it was usually pretty fun. And then I liked the hag fight at the end. And then it gave you a crap ton. I think it was caramel, right? Like, or whatever. It was good. See the caramel, caramel of black apples. I forget which. My least favorite is probably smashing pumpkins. Like I do smash once and then I won't do it again. So I've already done it. I did it to get the first time. And then I won't do that again. I just don't. I, it's not my favorite quest. But I do like this quest. This quest, I think, pound for pound, is, like, the best for XP. And it gives you a crap ton of rewards. And I just got kicked out of it. And I think I just lost my key. Yeah, it says we're currently active. It's going to let me into this thing. Okay, it did. Could almost make it onto that bridge. So I'll be there doing hardcore on Wednesday. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going for yet, though. I need to look at the rewards and see what they look like. I have not done that yet. I need to do that. We'll do that after this quest. Have you seen the rewards, Glass Jaws? I'm not sure if you're still here, but. If you are, let me know. What do you think of them? Are they are they cool? Do you think that the rewards are worth it? I mean, obviously, anybody in chat can answer me. Do you guys... Have you seen the rewards for the New Lanterns event? Do you think that they look cool? Um, do you think that they're worth farming for? Or are they just, like, you know, cosmetics that are kind of cool that you might play a couple days for? Because the time commitment, not only do you have to go to a new server which requires you setting up a new character and, and generating a completely new economy separate from the economy that you have on your home server where your main is. But 
you also have to then fill these lanterns and the lantern fill is not quick my experience on the hardcore server even though i did the math wrong calculating i thought it was going to be like thousands of hours but it ends up coming out to a really really long time to fill all of the all of the lanterns because it just the fill is so slow and that's of course not counting any errors or lag bubbles or mistakes that you make like with the hardcore ones that would make them reset and you have to start over again on a new tune so i was just kind of wondering you know is it actually going to be worth it like are the rewards cool enough like what what's the difference between both of the mounts um i don't know i have to look and see if it's you know something that I want to chase because otherwise I might just chase you know like whatever the easiest hardcore one to get is like a cloak or something like that I don't really care about the shield I don't really care about the pet either like I have my favorite hardcore pet which I have out right now it's the little Archon Lantern um it was my favorite thing before they introduced it. When they introduced it, I'm like, oh, that's great. I get to hunt for my favorite little pet. Why aren't these shaman coming over here? God, I completely missed him. I completely... Oh, I okay, got him. I bet I missed him because I have a pumpkin on my head. Do you guys think that I can use the trebuchet here and I, the ballista or whatever and actually hit this? Like, is there a trick to using this ballista? Because every time I've been using it recently, it's been shooting me into a mountain. So I'm going to try to get on it, right? Like, I'll, I'll get on it. I'll face completely straight ahead. Okay, we're facing straight ahead. I'll click it. Fire away. Let's see if it shoots. See how it's going off? Why? Why does it keep shooting me into the mountain? It never used to do that. That is... Look where my... Dimension door is that is a really far away from where it's supposed to be shooting. I think the ballista is busted. So I'll be there. I'll be there, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to play because here's the other part of the lanterns event. And I put a video on my YouTube channel that shows exactly like what I experienced on the hardcore server last week uh, on the new server with the new event. I, I make a tune at on my YouTube channel. I have a video up right now. I just it went live earlier today. I make a brand new tune. I decide to play a Dragon Lord. We do everything as if it's like a brand new hardcore server. And the problem I keep running into is that the because when you have this lantern equipped, it, it flags you to find these mist stalkers, but there's no way to tell when or where or how you're going to get one. So it's completely random. So as, as soon as you enter an area, if you're doing the hardcore version anyway, it doesn't matter if you're doing the regular version because it doesn't matter if you die. But if you're doing the hardcore version, it's basically like the hounds. Like you're stuck, riveted to the screen. You can't look away because... What I noticed is these mist stalkers, there's no, I didn't have an audio signal. It could be something in my UI that I turned off, but I heard nothing. Suddenly I saw a message pop up on my, my screen. A mist stalker is near and then blammo, I was getting attacked. It was like under five seconds. Like the prep time for it is super, super low. So it's like almost like you get jumped and I did a quest. It, I was in the quest for like 40 minutes. And I got nothing. 
so it's it, for me, from my perspective, it was too too slow and random and wasn't because once I killed the Mistalker and put the points in the lantern, it was only like three or four points, whatever it was, you know, like it wasn't a lot. And I'm, I'm looking at filling 750 points and I just got three points, bro. Like that's I'm going to be doing this for the next four months just to fill one. Um, yeah, so Jabber, uh, yeah, so here's the thing. With the hardcore ones, you cannot die once they're in your backpack. Okay, so what that means is you go to the hardcore vendor, you can only pick them up when you're level one, rank one, and the, the they go into your backpack, whether they're equipped or not. If you die, they are deleted from your backpack, right? So you, you're you okay. You can continue to play, but you cannot continue to fill the hardcore lanterns because they're deleted. You could go and get the regular lanterns, or you could, when you're level one, rank one, go and pick up all 10 lanterns. So get all the regular softcore or whatever they're calling them, story mode lanterns, and then get all the hard mode lanterns. So now you've got a backpack filled with 10 lanterns. You equip the one that you want to put the points into and then just run around. I didn't have a problem with any of that. I didn't have a problem with like the whole concept of not dying. Although the event starts with you trying to evade a Balrog that if it hits you, it will root you. If it, if it glares at you, it roots you and then it hits you for 12,000 damage and kills you. So if you're in the mindset of not dying and you're instantly killed, it kind of like fucks with your head in the sense that you're already, you already died. You know what I mean? It's not a good feeling for a hardcore player because you're trying to do everything not to die. And then you get rooted and hit by a CR 70 for 12,000 damage. So it's kind of like on our regular hardcore server, if people were playing chicken with the T-Rex, the you know, it's like you, you just do something that you feel like you shouldn't do. So I'm hoping when I do my run on the on the new server that they fixed it so that the stair root lock is like a shorter range. So you can just run around the bell rug and not actually get tagged by it. But it killed me a bunch before I figured out what I was doing wrong, like running too close to it and stuff like that. Um, and then the other thing which is what made me start talking about this in the first place is that I didn't find it fun. The randomness of not knowing when the mist stalkers would appear. In other words, just it'd be different if like you could look around the quest for where there's patches of mist and then like, you'd be likely to find one there. This is not like that at all. It's completely random. It's, it's very similar to the hounds from season five, where suddenly there's just one, right on top of you attacking you um but with these mist stalkers sometimes it's one and sometimes it's four i saw as many as four and they're champions so if you're in a reaper quest you can get you know some damage boosted champion like i got one shotted by one of these things that spawned on me so i mean it just made me feel like if i were doing hardcore it would be super frustrating and then the other thing is, can you, as a, a player uh, who's not doing the event, follow a player who is and basically bodyguard them? So if like somebody really wanted the rewards and you didn't care, could you run around with them and just basically gank or attack everything that attacked them and help them kill these misfires? I think the answer to that question is yes, which makes me think, People who multi-box probably will be able to like do this and not really have a hard time because if you had like five PCs multi-boxed and each one had a lantern equipped, then I don't think all the lanterns would pop at the same time. I think one would get it, you could kill the Miss Walker. Another one would get it, you could kill the Miss Walker. Like I don't think they do like a multiple flag thing, so. I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a question to see um, who 
can see them and who can't. I think anybody can see the Mistwalkers once they spawn because they look like normal mobs. It's not like they look like Reapers or anything like that. They do have a name from the plane they come from, whatever. I forget what that word is. But um, but the thing about them is that they spawned in as like champions. So like I said, one of the I got a bad spawn on the test server and one of them had a damage boost. It was an archer and he like... I mean, virtually, he probably wasn't one shot. It was probably like two shots, but it was a fuck ton of damage. And it happened really quick. Like, there wasn't an indicator. Like, you know how when you do the, the Crystal Cove, you can hear the pirates kind of laugh and you hear that little musical thing. So you kind of know when the pirates spawn near you. Um, you hear that weird, like, wee wee kind of sound. It's just whatever pirate noise they make. This was nothing. This was, I saw a message on the screen. You see the screen get misty, and then blam, you're attacked. It made me wonder, like, they could have made that slower, like a 10 second. But then maybe they were thinking, well, they don't want to give people time to prepare. They want to kind of jump them. Um, but in order for you to fill the lantern, you have to you have to kill these things. So it's not like anybody could cheese it by, like, recalling out in the time that the thing was going to spawn on you if you were worried because you wouldn't get the points like the whole point is to actually eliminate the things and, and gather the points so i i guess what what i would have found more fun and i did say this on my feedback on the test server oh that's great yeah 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 that is great because that was something that i said immediately like uh, at least on my mains, I have a lot of really good trinkets. I, and I would have been shocked if I was the only one who felt that way. So having the lantern as a cosmetic makes a lot more sense. I thought that they should do the offhand cosmetic slot, but I don't know which cosmetic slot that they did. Um, that's good news. And the other thing that I think I was really worried about, the um, I was just really worried about like how bad it felt you know the bad's not the right word it just didn't feel fun like it wasn't like so i've got i've got 10 lanterns in my bag and i just killed a mist walker right and i look at the lanterns and they're all empty except for one that got three points and bro i have to fill 750 points like it's just sort of an when we think about getting past lives getting epic iconic heroic racial past lives it's not presented in front of us as a grind towards 350 heroic past lives or whatever how many there are we we kind of abstract it we're kind of like oh, okay now i'm gonna do these three now i'm gonna do my three rogue lives now i'm gonna do my three fighter lives and sort of breaks it into like edible bits for us but when you look at an empty bar that needs 750 points in it and you just put three points in it just felt really like oh my god i'm really going to be doing this until february like how am i going to do this fast i played on the server for i think it was about three hours on the test server and i think at the end i had got like 30 points into the 750 points and so i tried to do some math to kind of figure out how long that would take me three hours i got 30 points i did the math wrong but the point is you're still looking at like over a thousand hours right and i don't know if like i played the fuck out of Baldur's gate i put in about a thousand hours into that game and i played that game a lot so if they want me hunting for these cosmetics for a thousand hours that is a long 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 time I mean, think about it. Like, people buy AAA games, they log in, they play them for 100 hours, and they consider it like, wow, that was a great game. I played the hell out of that. I played it. High, like, look on, I, I said this on the forums. I look in your Steam account or your Epic account or like your Origin store and see like how many hours you have in your games. Yeah, MMOs are different. Like, if I were to do time played on Mary on Sarlona, I got, I don't even know how many thousands of hours i have but i've been playing since you know 2006 for an event i mean 
I've been playing the hell out of Diablo 4, the new expansion, and I think I've only played that for like 40 hours. And I feel like I've been playing the hell out of that game. So, like, I just don't... I don't... I'm going to go there. I'm going to do Death Smile. I'll set up the guild. I'm going to do the hardcore. I'll grab the lanterns. But I just don't foresee, like, a. I probably will still be doing them in the summer. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see me finishing these in six months. I don't... Uh, who knows if I'll ever even finish them. We'll see. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I'm hoping that... I'm hoping that my I'm estimating this a little bit wrong and that maybe it goes a little faster. Maybe they heard the feedback about the walkers. But, I mean, I was in a quest for 35 minutes and sat around for another 10 minutes. Um, I did post that video on my YouTube channel. You can actually watch it. We did one of the Feywild quests. We did immortality lessons. I did all the optionals, in our, in our, like, all the way to the end, and we didn't get one. And then I sat around for a while talking, and then we eventually got one. So, like, it's not something... I guess the, the point is, like, if you wanted to sort of, like, power farm this event i don't think it's like going to be easy to do that because i couldn't figure out a way to pop these you know if they if they put in the store or in the game like maybe you could find these flares that you could drop on the ground and it would kind of like attract one of these mist walkers that would be cool because at least then you could say okay uh, Okay, I've been playing, I found, you know, four flares, I'm gonna drop a flare here because I want to get the Miss Walker now, and then finish the quest and get the hell out of here. Like, that to me would be something that I think would be a little bit cooler to give you a little bit more control over, over spawning these things. Because right now, it's just really, really, like, 40 minutes in a quest, bro. Like... Just turn myself to stone. I am so over fucking wild magic. <laughs> Get me out. Get me to level 30 so I can TR immediately. I don't want to be a wild mage anymore. You know, to be fair to this, though, I'm not using any of the, like, controls. I have all the controls turned off, so I get everything bad. And I'm even making it worse, because I'm using this um, Power in Chaos, which, like, I think it makes it you more likely to get the bad shit. So, like, I see it all. Like, it's it's pretty it's pretty bad. I've said it before, like, if you were playing pen and paper and you were role playing i think wild magic would be super fun because you could, it would allow you to role play some really funny shit like your character would be really interesting you could do a lot of weird stuff but in an mmo it they we just don't have the environment for that kind of re weird randomness nobody really cares um you know if all of a sudden you turn into stone which would be funny if it were pen and paper but here it's just annoying so I, I liked it when I was my first life and then I tolerated it for my second life and now I'm like completely sick of it for my third life. Like I, I want a TR immediately. So I think for what I'm going to do for my hardcore run is exactly what I posted in my video today on the, on the YouTube channel. I'm going to make a Dragon Lord. I'm going to do my Charisma build Dragon Lord and we're going to see how we do uh i did die on the test server um sort of to test it out to see but it was more of an accident at the time that i did die um but we got to see what happens and all of the the lanterns are completely deleted as soon as you die there's no it's not like when you res it's like as soon as your soul stone pops out the lanterns are gone so, and then I don't know, I didn't try this, but I think it would be a good thing to test when the server still, when the server opens, if, if you can get a lesser uh, reincarnation and then reincarnate yourself lesser, you're, so you're back to level one, rank one, and then go and try to pick up the lanterns again, just to see if you could do it. 
because right now the lantern giver is coded to only give them to rank one uh level one rank one characters i'm hoping that they fixed this bug but i'm i wouldn't be surprised if maybe they forgot it or so it'll be something that i'll test probably just to make sure that it's not you know um in the game because if it is that really changes the the you know the difficulty because if basically if you died you just need to lesser reincarnate and you can pick up your lanterns again but i'd be really shocked if it were bugged like that but i've seen in my history in this game some really weird shit so i think it's worth testing The other thing, too, is I don't know about you guys, um, where whatever server you're playing on, but here on Solona tonight, there has been some really bad lag. So, I mean, I just hope that on the new server, there's, you know, less lag. Uh, and the lag here has not just been, like, bank lag, which is sort of normal. It's, it's I've been getting a lot of, like, completely freezing up, rubber banding, um, stuttering, being stuck in the air. Like, just all the old-school lag. The stuff that I thought that they had fixed that apparently keeps coming back. It's almost like our servers have lag herpes, right? Like, we, we think we, we got rid of it, and then it comes back again. Okay, that's all of them. I'm gonna try something new. All right, so what we're gonna do, cause I keep hitting the wall when I'm facing straight ahead. So what I'm gonna do is like turn around and like face the back and then I'll hit this. And maybe this will fire me the correct way. Nope, <laughs> it's shooting me into the wall again. Why? <laughs> Luckily, I have Dimension Door, so it doesn't matter. Hope you guys are having a good night, whatever you're up to. Uh, I'm probably going to wrap the stream up soon after this. We did everything we set out to do, and we talked about everything I set out to talk about. I will definitely be streaming um, when they launch the new event and um, we'll post all of that stuff on my YouTube channel about it as it proceeds and what I'm doing over there. I plan on running my guilds over there and we'll see how it goes. Uh, it is not a normal hardcore. It's not what people were expecting who are in the hardcore community. I'm not sure how many people who do hardcore will show up and care. I'll be there just in case because, I mean, I try to do what I can to support this game in all its different crazy decision-making stuff that they do. But if it were up to me, I would have just launched a regular hardcore season, you know, but it's not up to me. So we're going to do this and maybe, who knows, next year, maybe we'll get a regular hardcore season and I'll be there for that. But um, in the short term, it seems like it's a good sort of biosphere for us for this game 18 years in to try to have a new tech for the servers and if they can pull it off and it works if this cormier test works and they get uh, like good numbers then it means maybe that they will eventually figure out how to transition all the servers 64 bit we'll see not going to hold my breath though um, before I go, so I'm going to find a raid for us, but before I do that, I want to take a look. So does anybody know in chat what these mounts are called? Are they just basically like mist, like, um, lanterns in the mist cosmetics? I'm just, what am I going to search for? Lanterns in the mist. Cosmetics. And then I'm assuming they were posted on... DDL, right? But I'm on the wiki right now. I don't see anything. So there's the event. Curse of the Five Fangs. There's the different Miss Stalkers, but they don't talk about the rewards here.
Let me go to the forum. Let's see, I just want to see what these look like. I'm sorry you guys can't see what I'm looking at. I just have a browser open and I'm on the DDO forum. Um, okay, here's the announcement. Cormier arrives Wednesday. But are there links? Does anybody know? Am I looking in the right place? Okay, I see something. Oh, I do. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, okay. The pet looks like a lantern. That's cool. Is it the best pet I've ever seen? No, but it's cool. Yeah. The mount looks like the... Um, like the panther that they gave us for Menace of the Underdark. And they put giant saber tooth teeth on it. And then gave it a bunch of like armor. And it looks like a leopard. At least the one I'm seeing. I'm not sure if this is the hardcore version or the normal version. Uh, the shield is basically looks like a tower shield. It's black. You guys can see this if you should go to the DDO forum and click on that. Um, Lanterns of the Mist is arriving. Link. There's a giant picture in it. I wonder, can I? Can I copy? I wonder if I can post it. I think I could post it now. Um, yeah, that's not letting me do it. I was like, I'll post it in the chat stream. It's not letting me. I can post it on Discord, though, which is probably what I'll do. But I mean, based on looking at this, yeah, I'm, you know, okay, it's a cool mount. But is it something that I feel like I have to have? I don't think so. So far, like, my favorite thing is that little pet, which just looks like a little lantern. It's pretty cool. I'm not a shield person, so I don't really care. I can't really see the cloak, but I'm assuming the cloaks look a lot like, um... I'm assuming the cloaks look a lot like what the uh, NPCs around the event are wearing. And they... I thought that the cloaks looked pretty cool. I didn't think that they looked, like, phenomenal, but I thought they looked okay. They, they kind of have like a sort of medieval castle look with a little face on it. Um, they have like a fleur de lis and it's black and gray, which is a good color palette. We don't get a lot of pure black in GDO, so I like that. But I like I said before, I'm not really a shield guy. Like I, I, I have shields, but I usually um, I use my cane is, you know, the cane from Ravenloft is usually what I use because it's, yeah, I think it looks cool. Um, but I think if you were into shields, it is a cool shield. I don't know if it's as cool as the skull head from, from, you know, uh, the salt marsh, which I think is like a really cool 3d skull effect that they made for us. I don't think it's that cool, but it, I mean, it looks all right. The cloaks look all right. I think so far, like, seeing what I've seen, I probably would want the pet just to have it. Uh, the mount would be nice to get, but I don't know if I'd want to chase that for, like, six months. Like, I, I just honestly don't think it's worth the time. Um, but somebody might see that and, like, love it, especially if you love cat. Like, giant cat mounts. Like, that'll definitely, you know, like, it looks good. It definitely looks good. But I'm probably not going to swap out my horse for it. But I don't know if what they're showing me is the story mode version or the hard mode version. Like the, you know, the um, the hardcore version. I'm hoping that the hardcore version looks a little bit different. And right now I can't really see anything that is indicating that. And if I look in this forum thread, there's no images so i think they're going to do what they did for us in previous hardcore seasons right where we don't know what the rewards look like until people on hardcore start earning the rewards and then just and then posting images of them themselves it's that frustrates me like to no end that makes me want to tell them to give me a job 
so I can post images for people to see before they go live. Because I think if people are like me, they want to plan around what they're going to chase by how something looks, not by just the fact that it exists. And then once you get it, you realize that it's gross and you didn't want it in the first place. Right? I mean, that's the fear. That's what I think. They're like... I hallucinate like they're saying, well, these aren't that good. So when people see them, they're not going to want them. So let's not show them to them. That way they go after them. And then when they find them, you know, they're, it's too late. I don't want, I don't like that. I want them to, I want them to make stuff that is so cool that when people see it, they're like, man, I need to have that. Anyway, sorry, you guys can't see the, the web page I'm looking at. I'm just on the DDO form. So they do have an image there of like at least um, the mount and then uh, the pet. And then you can see the, the shield. And like I said, the cloak looks a lot like the shield. So yeah, yeah, exactly, bro. That's a great, it does look like the battle cat from He-Man. Yeah. So if like, hey, I'm sure people, I'm sure out there somewhere that tickles them. And they're like, oh my God, that's my favorite mount. You know, they probably had the little toy when I used to have the He-Man toys when I was young. And then I had a store. I still have the store on eBay where I buy and sell vintage toys. Um, I've had, it's closed at the moment, but I have sold He-Man toys. So I don't know if I've ever had the battle cap, but I did. An interesting aside about my, my toy store is that the most expensive toys that I've ever sold are Legos, in case you're wondering. So if you have any Legos, keep them, hold on to them, because they're like gold. They're very valuable. People love them. People buy them. Um, so what we're going to do, I appreciate you guys hanging out. I hope you guys had a good night. I hope you had fun watching the stream. Thank you very much for all the subs, the gifted subs, any of the cheers and bits and other stuff, the follows, especially the follows. I've been trying to get more followers on this channel. Um, I also appreciate you guys who follow me on YouTube and check out my stuff over there. I just uploaded a new, new video today. Um, I will be there for Hardcore on Wednesday. I might stream Diablo before then. I'm not sure what's going on with my week. Um, I might stream again tomorrow, maybe. We'll see. I've been playing a sorcerer on in Diablo's uh, new season and have been having some fun. Um, but in the short term, because I want to go get something to eat, we're going to raid somebody and I'm going to look and see really quick who is doing uh, Dungeon Dragons online and then we will toss them a raid. <laughs> for gold that is flowing somewhere in the cold world here there is no knowing hey la oh la 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 we love games there's a standing stone let's make camp we love games let's make camp and play more games hey la Oh la la la, we love games. Where are you going? There's no knowing what magical ways, what evil is growing. Hey la, oh la la la, we love games. There's a standing stone. Let's make camp. We love games. Let's make camp and play more games. Hey, la, oh, la, la, la. We love games. We love games. There's a standing stone. Let's make camp. We love games. Let's make camp and play more games. More games. Hey. La, oh la la la, we love games. We love games. Where are games?
games. La 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 la. We love games. There's a standing stone. Let's make camp. We love games. Let's make camp and play more games. Hey more games. Hey la. Oh la la la. We love games. Hunting old crypts is folly. Just play games and be jolly. Magical treasures hide in the dark. So rest, then embark. We love games. There's a standing stone. Let's make camp. We love games. Let's make camp and play more games. More games. Hey la, oh la la la. We love games. Hey la, merry la. Oh la 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 la.